Raiders versus the Razorbacks on CBS. Country Music's Entertainer of the Year sets the adrenaline level. And now the Home Depot SEC on CBS were about to raise that adrenaline level. From Gainesville come the 11th ranked Florida Gators to take on the hometown Razorbacks of Arkansas as SEC East meets West. The Hogs are back home and here they come. They've won eight straight following an SEC loss. They're a great November team under Brett Bielema. And the East leaders from Gainesville, Florida, six and one, and in first place in the East as they were a year ago. As we take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC conference standings, Florida in the exact spot they were last year. One loss and ranked 11th in the country. They own the tiebreaker over Kentucky. The Wildcats host the Bulldogs later tonight. In the West, things have changed a little bit. If you missed it, Texas A&M lost to Mississippi State. Auburn survived. They stay close to Alabama. Of course, it's the Tide and the Tigers later tonight on CBS. And welcome everybody to Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to game two of our triple header on CBS today. It's good to be back in a CBS booth for the first time in 25 years. John Shriffen will join us on the sideline, but bringing in my lead blocker is Aaron Taylor with me in the booth. You know, three losses for Arkansas, Aaron. They were all the top 10 teams, at least at the time. We've been here three days. I don't know if I've ever seen a team that wanted to get back to work more than Arkansas had. I think the Razorbacks are ready. I think you're right being around this team they had to make a decision you take an L like that you have to figure out whether or not you're going to fold your tent or step up and fix the problems the Sunday following the Auburn game they got together and had a team meeting they looked themselves in the mirror and they took some accountability both as players and a staff these guys are motivated to get back to their physical blue collar aggressive selves which means that their best playmakers and leaders on the offensive side Austin Allen the resiliency of an offense is usually a reflection of the quarterback so Allen needs to make good decisions and get rid of that football and Ellis he has to set the tone for a defense that is looking to avenge that brutal loss they took giving up 543 yards on the ground to Auburn I mentioned Florida's right where they were a year ago one loss ranked 11 last year there were questions about their offense Jim McElwain's offense in year two still skeptics on that side but not on the defensive side of the football no we asked defensive coordinator Jeff Collins how this group compared to his group a year ago he said hey we sent a lot of guys to the NFL but I think this group plays better as a group and that's what I notice on tape when you see these guys play throughout the year all three levels they're playmakers they can pressure the quarterback. They've got a pair of lockdown corners. They've got one of the best middle linebackers in the country and a defensive line that goes 10 deep across the board. So those guys come in early and often and are pretty fresh. I'm expecting a heck of a game today, Brad. 11th all-time meeting. Florida's won nine straight. There was one setback. John will be along to talk about that a little bit later on. First trip for Florida into Fayetteville in eight years. Jim McElwain, in his second season as a head coach he took his Gators to Atlanta a year ago they're in the driver's seat to repeat as Eastern Division champions if they can just keep on winning. Brett Bielema his fourth year here in Fayetteville even record of 23 and 23 we mentioned his teams have been great in November and coming off buys and SEC losses they're hoping for more of that today. Arkansas won the toss. They want the football. So Florida to kick. Pinheiro has got it teed up. And here we go from Razorback Stadium. And they're going to let it go. Touchback. It'll be the Hogs on offense as we take a look at our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. A guy that's been sensational this year, Austin Allen, 
their quarterback his brother Brandon the starter before him and now his first season third most passing yards in the SEC and entering the day he was tied for the top spot with 18 touchdown passes. Allen telling us he's 100 percent healthy after leaving that Auburn game with the knee contusion he's going to have to make some throws today in key moments if his ball club wants to get some progress against his defense for the Hawks from the 25 and they'll give it to Raleigh Williams on first down and there's some positive yardage immediately something they couldn't muster two weeks ago against Auburn he picks up nine as we take a look at the rest of the starting lineup with Aaron they made some changes up front with the big fellas yeah they certainly did and I think if Arkansas has to win this game this unit has to play well up front so keep your eye on the right guard number 62 Johnny Gibson He's a walk on with a great story making his first start and he's the one arrest with those other four guys. They're going to pave the way for Raleigh Williams one of the SEC's best running backs. Well they got nine on the first carry so second and short he gets the call behind his three back and he's got a first down across the 35. Let's take a look Florida defensively. They're very deep up front and they had the luxury of two of the best corners in the country. No question man every defensive coach in America is envious of Florida's lockdown cornerback duo of Quincy Williams and Jalen Tabor these guys are best of friends super competitive and have a skill set that is perfectly suited for the difficult yet effective press man coverage that they're asked to play seven interceptions between these two all Americans first down for the Razorbacks just outside their own 35 yard line sprinkle the tight end the motion man as Allen drops the throw for the first time and fires complete all the way to the 45 yard line it's his favorite target Drew Morgan Really nice job early on of Auburn establishing the run, but you notice the motion right before them. This is his favorite target, Drew Morgan. Running a nice route in between the coverage there. A nice change up on first down, getting away from the run. Plays like that will help force keep this Florida defense honest. Morgan came into the day fifth in the conference in receptions at his 42nd catch of the year. The first down Razorbacks at the Florida 45 in the round coming. Deion Stewart, one of the fastest guys on the team, and he gets it near the 41 yard line. Wilson and Davis, the linebacker, made the hit. Sometimes when you're playing a defense like Florida's that has a ton of speed, running misdirection plays or reverses, trying to get some speed out to the boundary will help slow them down. I think Arkansas is going to definitely try and run in between the tackles, but they also have to have a perimeter run game to stay balanced. Three wideouts here on second down and seven. Williams a single setback. Play action for Austin Allen. Steps up in the pocket, waits till the last moment, tried to get it to Morgan again, incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Really nice coverage that time. You saw Austin Allen hold that football there. That's one of the things that the coaches talked to us about is he's got to have that play clock in his head and get rid of that football. Sometimes he wants to hold on it too long. And that may happen today with as good as Florida is defensively covering up wide receivers. Razorbacks have given up 21 sacks already this year and combined the last two years, they'd only given up 28. So their pass blocking has not been quite what it was. And as Aaron just mentioned, sometimes Allen holds on to it a little bit too long. Third down of the shotgun. This time he got rid of it in a hurry, but broken pattern there. CC Jefferson was applying the pressure. And we got a Florida Gator dash, and that is Jefferson 96. One of the Ten guys that they rotate on a defensive line for Florida as we take another look and he had the pressure and then got rolled up on by Dan Skipper who was trying to block him. CC Jefferson one of the many defensive line players some of the young guys that coach McElwain told us is really helping out some of the older guys that the attitude and the energy that he plays and brings with not only to game day on Saturday but throughout the week in practice has really helped elevate the level of play of everybody. CC, an all freshman performer last year, a sophomore. And on his feet, they're going to have to help him off. So if there was an area where they could, I guess, you don't ever want to say afford an injury, it's probably that defensive line because they can really rotate guys through there. Yeah, and it's really competitive position. 
they determine their starters based upon who has the best week of practice so they are deep but make no mistake about it if Jefferson can't come back that's a huge loss up front for Florida Toby Baker the number two punter in the conference set to kick away to Antonio Callaway who can be dangerous back there and sometimes he can make some miscues as a punt returner as he did a couple of times in the Tennessee loss. Baker averaging 45.6 a kick. This is an end over end job that Callaway will take a fair catch just outside the 10 yard line. So Arkansas had something going, forced to punt, and that means the Gators offense, Luke Del Rio and company, take over from their own 11 yard line when we return to Fayetteville in a moment. No score early here in Fayetteville. As we take a look at the Florida starting lineups presented by Chick fil A. All starts with number 14, Luke Del Rio. Their quarterback has had a knee issue a couple of games this year. Started really strong, first two games, six touchdowns. Now, in the last three, five interceptions and only two scoring tosses. And the rest of the Florida. Offensive lineup. They like to run the ball to set up the play action for him, Eric. Yeah, I think sophomore Jordan Scarlett's emerged as kind of the go to guy in that run game that's been pedestrian but improving. I think to win this game today, Florida has to run the football, and Scarlett gives them their best chance to do that. He had a career high 26 carries of the win over Georgia last week. He flushes out of the backfield. So it's Del Rio all by his lonesome on first down and threw a strike, but it's in and out of the hands and intercepted. Santos Ramirez, touchdown. Arkansas defense. Santos Ramirez was the player that forced the fumble against Chad Kelly against Ole Miss to seal that game. He's got a knack for the football. He's a playmaker and a ball hawk. And this is just the old tip drill. Nice tight coverage that time. By Arkansas defensively, Ramirez was there to take advantage of it. And credit Josh Liddell for breaking that pass up and getting the first points on the board for Arkansas. Adam McFain adds the point after a 24 yard interception return and the Hogs defense strikes first. Aaron we barely got the graphic off the screen of Luke Del Rio's <laughs> problems with interceptions in the last three games and this happens. Well this one isn't on him. I think it was a pretty good throw. There's going to be a quick slant route right inside here you go right here he's just going to run in here you're going to have 35 Dwayne Eugene come over Josh Liddell is going to play him tight and then playing center field is going to be Santos Ramirez who's going to clean up for this that was just good tight coverage Liddell knocks that ball free I think he got scared a little bit because of Dwayne Eugene and Santos Ramirez gets an early score for the Arkansas defense who we thought struggled a little bit. It was Florida's defensive backs that we were raving right. about but Arkansas getting it done here early. That's only the second career interception for Santos Ramirez and he takes it to the house to give his team a 7 0 lead. Adam McFain will kick. Chris Thompson waits back at the goal line for the Gators. And he'll get a shot at this from the five yard line. Got a little seam and then got pasted as he crossed the 25 yard line by Nick Washington. So Luke Del Rio comes back out with one throw that probably should have been caught. Arkansas, let's take a look at their defense. Well, it's certainly no secret that they had their lunch handed to them against Auburn, but early on we see that they've come ready to play. Jeremiah Ledbetter, number 55. They moved him back outside to his more natural position at the defensive end spot. And we've already seen Santos <laughs> Ramirez making his effort and play have a factor here early on already. You picked out Santos Ramirez last night at the meeting. I said, why? You said, I think he's going to have a big impact on the game. <laughs> so far, so good. Here's an end around. Antonio Callaway, who does so many things so well, and he's got it out to the 35 yard line. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to Florida, Arkansas, or your favorite team from signing day to game day. You'll get instant coverage of every moment from every angle. Download the CBS Sports app 
today. 7 0 Arkansas early. Florida has moved it to the 35, second down and a yard. And they've got the first down and quite a bit more. Scarlett got hammered, but he got plenty to get it out to the 44 yard line. It was Ramirez who made the stop, but a pickup of nine. Backs bouncing outside the tackles and getting to the edge is what hurt Arkansas against that Auburn team. That's exactly what they did there, but Santos Ramirez was there to be able to clean it up. I think Arkansas defensively, when you take a look at Luke Del Rio, has been banged up a little bit. He's not at his best when he's on his move, so I think that they're going to try and change the picture on him and try and pressure this kid today. Well, Michael P. Ryan in the backfield, that is the play action, and now Del Rio's got a roll, got some heat, throws late. Ball's caught, but he's out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Tyree Cleveland, the guy that let that pass slip away that ended up being an interception, was the intended target. And the freshman, Aguim McTelvin, they call him Sosa Aguim, is the guy that got some pressure on Del Rio. Yeah, he's a true freshman. Only about 100 snaps coming into today's game, but watching film and looking at this kid, he's somebody that flashes particularly against the run. When he's engaged with an offensive lineman, if he sees the ball, he's got really violent hands and is able to shed the blocker and get some penetration. Second down of 10 for the Gators from the 44. And keep it on the ground. It is P. Ryan. For the 48 yard line, it'll bring up a third down. Dwayne Eugene helped in on the stop. One of the tough spots for the Arkansas defense has been that weak side linebacker position. They lost Dre Greenlaw, who they hope to have back in a couple of weeks. He was a all freshman performer a week ago. That spot's been kind of a touchy one for him. It has been losing Greenlaw was certainly a challenge and an issue. And to Dwayne Eugene's credit, he's in there and he plays hard, but sometimes his eyes get bad. The very first play of the Auburn game, he got sucked inside, got out of his gap. Fundamental defense is predicated upon being gap sound. Here's one of the matchups to watch today. Florida's offense is the best on third down in the conference. Arkansas is the worst. 50% for the Gators on third and six. They should have had one there. And Siante Lewis couldn't hold it. That should have been a first down. So a couple of balls. One went in and out of Cleveland's hands. Lewis probably should have had that. And Del Rio's stats aren't looking so good because of his receivers right now. No, Florida as a team just doesn't look very sharp. Siante Lewis. He was one of the guys I thought really stepped his game up a week ago against Georgia. Had a really nice game. He's a good inline blocker. That's just a pure concentration drop, and Arkansas is going to get the ball back as a result. Here's the top punter in the SEC, Larry Townsend. Jared Cornelius might have a chance. He will from the 20. Great coverage by Florida. And the Razorback offense is going to start right there when we come back with a touchdown lead. Arkansas's offense will be inside the 10. That means the Florida defense back out there and AT. Take a look at their Home Depot tools for success. They've had a lot of it on that side of the ball. Yeah, they certainly have. One of the things they do exceptionally well is get pressure on the quarterback. 16 hurries against Georgia by 12 different players. And if they can't beat you one on one on the edges, they'll blitz you. They'll bring one more that you can block. This is a cross dog between Jared Davis and Nick Washington, and they made Easton's day a long one. That's why I think that Arkansas has to establish the run and have some success on first and second down because Jeff Collins unit is playing at an extremely high level. Already Arkansas has had better success on the ground than Georgia did a week ago. Georgia had 19 carries for 21 yards. Nick Chubb had only 20 of those and it was a brutal beating by the Florida defense against Georgia in Jacksonville last week. So the offense for the Hawks working from their own nine yard line. That Walt Whaley, the tailback right now for the Razorbacks, the freshman. He's going to get the handle. And Whaley's going to lose. Well, he fought for a yard. He's going to lose a yard. He got one. Brian Cox was holding on for dear life. John Triffins, our man on the field. Triff, what do you got? Well, after getting beat up last week by Auburn, the theme heading into this Florida game, man up week. And one of the guys who really stepped up, sophomore walk-on, Johnny Gibson. He actually went into Coach Bielema's office and, Coach, give me a chance to play. Well, needing to beef up on that offensive line, Coach actually gave him some reps in practice. And today he is getting his first start. Guys, at 344 pounds, he is now the biggest guy weight-wise on that offensive line. See how he does today in that first down. Well, right now their running game is working. This time to the outside and a first down. 
by Whaley. Marcel Harris had to run him out of bounds, but he got 16. Florida's trying to load the box, but they got some good blocks out here on the outside edge to build a wall here, creating a nice wall for Whaley to be able to run behind. It's a pin and pull scheme. They tried to run the linebackers underneath. You can't do that. Just a nice job of play calling, and Arkansas told us we think we can run the football to the edges against Florida, and that's exactly what they did on that last one. Boy, and John's guy, Johnny Gibson, got a nice seal block on Brian Cox on that play, so that was timely. Here's Austin Allen rolling left. He can throw well going to the left, but he's got a lot of pressure right now. And not what he needed was a hit on the knee. He did pick up about a yard and a half. Jalen Tabor knocked him off his pins over there. Browns and the Ravens on Thursday night football. On NFL Network here. The SEC on CBS Arkansas by a touchdown as we approach the midway point of the first quarter. Kendrick Jackson remains in there as the fullback. And Whaley gets another carry. And he found an open and a big one. Out across the 40 to the 42. The freshman goes. And again, Marcel Harris from the safety spot had to drag him down. That offensive line is humming right now. They really worked on the run game during the bye week. They made some changes. They wanted to get more physical. There was a run through. Defensive lineman came too far upfield, creating some big gashes and seams up in there. And the Hogs are rolling. This is really good sign for Arkansas, who felt like a run game was critical to their success today. And they've really got Florida on its heels. They moved from their own nine to the 41. Allen wants to throw a screen. Got it to Whaley. Whaley's got a blocker. He's got the sideline of the big fella. One more guy to beat. He's going to drag him down, but he's down to the 17-yard line. 42 yards. Well, offensive linemen can be good at the line of scrimmage, but they can also get downfield. 51, Yelda Froholt right there gets the key block that allows Whaley to get himself downfield until he's finally brought down. But this red zone is a critical area for Arkansas today. And it's the Verizon red zone this year. 14 touchdowns for Austin Allen in that area of the 18 he's thrown this year. That's pretty impressive stuff. Whaley comes out after that long run. Williams back in at tailback from the 17-yard line. He'll get the pitch. Williams follows his fullback. Maybe to the 13. Big hit by Jared Davis, the middle linebacker. That's a toss sweep with a pin and pull scheme. They're getting Dan Skipper, their big left tackle, out in space, running the football into the boundary in the red zone. You got to think about this, Brad. They didn't even get into the red zone against exactly. Auburn in their last <laughs> out. That's pretty hard not to do. Remember, they got a gigantic tight end in Jeremy Sprinkle. Actually, they got both tight ends in there right now, Austin Cantrell as well. But Sprinkle's the big target at 6'6. Second down at seven. Allen play fake. Throws corner of the end zone. Tips incomplete. Nice job back there defensively to make a play on the ball by Daniel McMillan. That would have been a touchdown. It sure would have been, but it almost could have been an interception. This ball got let go. It should have been picked. Austin Allen gets away with one here, steps up. Just doesn't put enough mustard on. He was trying to float it up over. But 13's just there to be able to get it. And McMillan made a nice play and another costly error by Florida. They're just not looking very sharp here today on either side of the football. That should have been caught. Now it's third down at seven. Allen's going to roll to throw this down. Fires corner of the end zone flag down. Incomplete. Penalty marker down at the five yard line. Pass was intended for Keon Hatcher. First penalty marker of the day with 6.04 to go in the quarter. Our referee's Dave Smith. Pass interference on the defense, number 31. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. First down, the penalty on T's Tabor. And so it's first and goal for the Razorbacks. Well, as good as Florida is as a football team on the defensive side of the ball, they're dead last in penalties in the SEC. Just getting there a little bit early. 
He's a lockdown quarterback. Him and Quincy Wilson make a nice pair, but it's clear Arkansas intends to throw the football right into the teeth of the strongest part of this Florida defense. Riley Williams, the single setback. Drew Morgan is the motion man on first and goal. And it's Williams in the middle of the pack. Williams fights his way all the way. Touchdown, Arkansas. Riley Williams, sixth rushing touchdown of the year. Just a really nice job backside by Dan Skipper and Yelda Froholt to maintain their blocks. Froholt comes off on Jared Davis, one of the best middle linebackers in the country. Good movement at the point of the attack, and that SEC strain puts Arkansas up here 14 0. A 91 yard Arkansas drive in eight plays. The biggest play of the drive. Devon Whaley on a screen pass took it 42 yards. His counterpart, Raleigh Williams, did the rest down close from six yards out. And look at this, Arkansas 14, Florida nothing. Watch the best games from the best conference every week on your phone or tablet. Plus, get instant scores, stats, and team alerts. Download the CBS Sports app today. Monday on CBS, Adam Sandler joins Kevin James for a very special Kevin Can Wait Monday at 8, 7 Central, only on CBS. I hope Sandler sings. I love it when Sandler sings. <laughs> He'd be singing if he was a Razorback fan right now. Florida coming in had only given up three points in the first quarter all year. Arkansas has got two touchdowns already. Yeah, Coach McElwain telling us, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll be interested to see how we play. He said he liked the makeup of his team, the balance on the defensive side of the ball. Remember, this is a Florida team. To your point, we opened the show. They were 6-1 and one a year ago. They lost their last three games, only scoring 24 points down the stretch. You have to wonder if you're a Florida fan, if you're starting to see some of those seams start to open here again early in this ball game. Well, that 91-yard drive between Riley Williams and Devil Whaley, they had... So the two running backs did the damage. Kick bottled and they'll take a knee. Chris Thompson, Florida bring it out to the 25. Now Luke Del Rio has been well traveled. Walked on at Alabama. Didn't play, then transferred to Oregon State. Played in three games there, then came to Gainesville, basically his home state when his dad was Jacksonville Jaguar coach. And named the starting quarterback before this season after sitting out last year. And today's had some early trouble. I don't think the interception was his fault. I don't think the fact that they didn't convert on third down on the last drive was his fault. A couple of drop passes. Certainly wasn't his fault, but it is going to be his responsibility to <laughs> yeah. help get his team back into this ball game. They don't have the stat for that, that it wasn't your fault. <laughs> they need one of those. First down for the 25, trailing by two touchdowns. Crowd getting into it a little bit now, too. Fakes it to Scarlett on the bootleg. Del Rio throws on the run, diving for it and making the catch. Ahmad Fullwood. So a nice game on that play out to the 41 yard line. Nice throw by Del Rio on play action on first down. Really good coverage across the board. This was about his only option. But Fullwood just getting his arms underneath that football. It was a little underthrown. It was a nice catch. Very nice. First down at the 41. High snap bottled. He got it to Scarlett. That could have been a disaster. Almost a fumble. And a loss of about a yard on the play. It'll be second down and 11 as we head to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for an Advocare update. All right, Brad, thank you. Tennessee trying to break its three-game losing streak here against Tennessee Tech. Josh Dobbs floating one to Josh Malone. The Vols' first game without Jalen Hurd on the team. They score first. But from all of us here in New York, welcome back to the CBS Sports team, Mr. Nessler. Seems like it was only yesterday I was wearing this blazer. That was a different blazer. It was about four inches smaller, I think. Defense is fired up for Arkansas right now. Aguim made first contact in there, the freshman, number three. And it brings up a third down again. 
Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a long time that jacket fit in, and it still looks like it fits pretty good now, partner. <laughs> now the crowd's going to get into it at Razorback Stadium right here. Expect pressure and movement by Arkansas. They want to try and change the picture on Del Rio. Let's see if they do it. He doesn't want to make another mistake here on third down and long. Has plenty of time and now running out of it. Throws across the middle, but Arkansas is all over that. Jordan Scarlett dropped in his tracks. Only about a yard gain, and Dwayne Eugene, the weak side linebacker, who's made a couple of good plays already, had the stop. Well, we were talking about Dwayne Eugene being the weak link at that weak side linebacker, but he's playing like a strong linebacker. Good job, nowhere really to go, but Del Rio makes a good decision. Take what the defense gave him, which was a check down, but unfortunately for the Gators, Eugene was waiting on him, forcing another punt. I got to tell you, this Arkansas defense is playing like we expected Florida to play. Exactly. Johnny Townsend's got to kick it again, averaging 47.6, but these are just the end over end type that hope to call a fair catch, and it does by Jared Cornelius at the 24 yard line. Tomorrow, NFL on CBS. Got a double play for you. First, Antonio Brown of the Steelers take on Joe Flacco and the rival Ravens. And Andrew Luck and the Colts try to outperform Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Check your local listings beginning with JB, Tony, Bart, Coach Cower, and Boomer on the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. 14 to nothing, Arkansas with 321 remaining, and they got the ball back. Great drive last time when they started at their own nine and took it the length of the field for a touchdown. Good field position, or better, I should say, here, working from the 25. Here's a jet sweep by Cornelius. Broke one tackle, but not the second wave. And finally, they roll him out of bounds. Maybe got a yard out of it. And now a little skirmish going on. When you run a guy out of bounds on the home team sideline, it's sometimes not the best thing to do. No, you got to make a business decision there <laughs> sometimes. And Marcus May trying to take on Dan Skipper, who's 6'10". He's a pretty good football player, but you better think about that. Nice job that time of setting the edge and Florida's defense recognizing a jet sweep back into that boundary. True to form, Arkansas using a lot of motion and trying to get that perimeter run game established. If there's a taller tackle in football than Dan Skipper, I haven't seen him yet. Second down and long, Austin Allen straight drop, fires, intercepted down the sideline. Luke Carson will coast in, touchdown Florida. Just too easy that time. For Dawson. Dawson, somebody that stepped up and had a really good game a week ago, just in one on one tight coverage with Jeremy Sprinkle, just beautifully undercuts it. That ball thrown a little bit behind Sprinkle. That was one of the matchups that they wanted to try and attack because of Sprinkle's size, but a costly mistake by the usually good decision making Austin Allen. So Duke with the touchdown return. There you see what the Florida Gators have done this season and in eight of the last nine years. So we've had two pick sixes in the first 12 and a half minutes of the football game. Extra point by Pinheiro is good. And that changes the complexion of things in a hurry. 244 remaining in the first quarter. First it was Santos Ramirez as he took this one off the ricochet for the score for Arkansas. And Duke Dawson and that Florida defense said, anything you can do, we can do too. He goes 36 yards for the touchdown. And it's 14 to seven, Arkansas. Florida with a defensive touchdown has cut the lead to seven. Austin Allen is eighth interception of the year, and that one a costly one. 36 yard return for the score. Pinero to kick. Deion Stewart and Keon Hatcher wait on the other end. This one's returnable for Stewart from the goal line. A little guy with a lot of speed. Stewart flags down. It's going to come back anyway as he gets it out to the 23 yard line. And we'll have an illegal block. And that will negate decent starting field position for the Razorbacks.
Here's a call. During the return, locking it back, number 38 on the receiving team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Reed Miller, I think, is the guilty party on the penalty. Matt LeBlanc stars in the new comedy, Man with a Plan. Don't miss a new episode Monday after Kevin can wait right here on CBS. Well, the eight-yard line, not good starting field position for Arkansas. They would have had, despite the penalty, they get three there. Alex Anzalone, the linebacker, makes the stop. This is where Austin Allen, or any quarterback, Aaron's just got to put that out of your mind. They say he's a very cool cat. He just says, Coach, just <laughs> chill. I got this. I'm we'll chill. see how chill he is. Yeah, we're going to learn a lot about Austin Allen's competitive toughness. How a quarterback responds after some adversity tells us a lot about him. We're going to get a chance to see that right here from Austin Allen. Second down and seven at the two-minute mark of the first quarter. Trips to the left. They go that way to the wide receiver screen. Hatcher gets it out across the 15, close to the first down. Maybe not close enough to measure. Let's see where they spot it exactly. We got a Gator down as well, or slow to get up. I think it's Jared Davis, mm. middle linebacker. He's one of the best around. It's a big physical three down linebacker that kind of sets the tone. All the calls for this defense. He's been banged up with a high ankle sprain. Didn't take a snap last week, and they can ill afford to lose him. We'll check on Jared when we get back in a moment. Well, the shoe and the sock and the tapes coming off that left ankle of Jared Davis over on the Florida sideline, and we take another look. Just looks like he's coming over and gets twisted up. You can tell right there. Something wasn't right. Just looked like a non-contact injury. A yeah. high ankle sprain is so much more painful than a regular ankle sprain. Be interesting to see if he can come back. There's a third down and short for the Razorbacks offense. And tumbling for it is Riley Williams. We talked, Aaron talked about Jared Davis being banged up. First suffered that ankle injury three weeks ago against Missouri. Teammate Alex Anzalona, the other linebacker, kind of rolled up on his leg on this play. Had to be helped off the field and didn't return. And this one, just a non-contact, just on his own, plants that foot, and then it just turns on him. I was surprised last week when he came back and played after not practicing all week and led the team in tackles against Georgia because of just how painful it is. I've had that injury, and I had to get injections just to get back out on the field. Well, he can get back out there. They, he's the main cog in the middle four. Here is Austin Allen going deep for Drew Morgan. Morgan knocked down. It's after the ball had already passed and fans are looking for pass interference. They're not going to get it. Looked to me like when the contact occurred, the ball was already passed him. Let's take another look. Yeah, it does a nice job of getting inside Jalen Tabor. But then the safety comes over Nick Washington and hits him. I think they have a right to gripe. I think Washington was aware that that ball had hit the ground. But in real time, it was kind of bang, bang. Florida got to be careful. Remember, penalties are a real issue for the Gators. Might have gotten away with one there. Second down at 10, little counter as Williams trying to weave his way through the middle of the Florida defense down down to the 24 yard line. And we'll bring up another third down here as we wind the clock down near the end of the first quarter. Arkansas doing a really nice job of winning on first and second down to give themselves some makeable and manageable third downs. Here we have a third and five. We've seen them in situations like this go back to their screen game. I would look for a high percentage pass and throw or maybe take advantage of a blitzing Florida defense and maybe run a draw. Allen in the gun. Pressure coming, fires down the middle, too far in front of his intended receiver, Jared Cornelius. And Caleb Brantley was applying the pressure on Austin Allen. Been so impressed with Caleb Brantley, the redshirt junior. Here he is right here. Just working over Johnny Gibson, that right guard. Those stunts, the crisscrossing of the defensive lineman. Florida is so effective at. When you got a new player in there facing that speed, it's hard. The key to picking up stunts is having your shoulder pads stay on the same level. 
Florida will definitely come back to that until Arkansas proves they can stop it. But pressure is what's forced that incompletion. So Toby Baker set to punt again. It'll be probably the last play of the quarter. We don't have a penalty. Nice kick. Spiral goes out of bounds. And they're going to spot it right about the 36 yard line to end quarter number one. That's the end of the first 14 to 7. The Razorbacks at home in front will return to Fayetteville after this message and a word from your local station. Just about set to start the second quarter from Fayetteville. Hometown Razorbacks lead the Florida Gators 14 to 7. Brad Nessler, Aaron Taylor, John Shriven with you from Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Florida with the ball. They had it about half the amount of time that Arkansas did in the first quarter. Del Rio, the throw. Deep down the sideline, he overshoots everybody. That was intended for Antonio Callaway. Jared Davis get another look at the injury to his ankle again as he just pulled up lane on his own. They actually cut his sock off, but they put his shoe back on, so it looks like he wants to come back out there. Whether he will or not, I don't know. Yeah, I tell you what, NFL scouts are drooling over this kid because of his physicality, his vision, his anticipation, and the way he takes the game to the offensive line. He's a downhill player and been a heck of a weapon here for Florida. Second down. Del Rio pump fakes and then throws an out that's too far out in front of his intended receiver, Freddie Swain. Let's bring in John on the sideline. Well, I noticed when they taped up Davis's ankle for a second time after they had taken his shoe off, they put so much tape on that left ankle, he actually had a tough time getting that shoe back on. But they taped his ankle, and they put more tape over the shoe. He did a little test on the sideline, and he went over to the trainers and said, I'm good to go. So he looks like he's coming back in, guys. Tough dude. Thanks, John. Meanwhile, third down for Florida's offense. Mark Thompson in the lineup for the first time today and the first time since the suspension that kept him out of the Georgia game a week ago. Del Rio rolls left and throws short. Got it complete to Goolsby as tight end. Battles his way maybe to the 40. But that's all he can get. And it's fourth down and they'll have to give it up. Credit Arkansas's defense on the back end of doing a nice job. Del Rio had no options to throw. Once again, forced to throw a check down. This is a second third down in a row that Arkansas did not bring the blitz. They only rushed four. That means they dropped seven in coverage, and that zone coverage doing a nice job of limiting the options of the Gators. Remember, you take away that pick six by Duke Dawson, and Florida has done absolutely nothing so far. It's been a great performance by Arkansas defense. Booming kick this time from Townsend. Boy, he got all of that baby to the 15-yard line. Fair catch by Jared Cornelius. Jim McElwain's team down a touchdown, and the Razorbacks back on offense when we come back. Although there are seven teams in the East and seven in the West, the games this season have been anything but evenly matched. Now we stand on week 10, and the West is dominated. Eight wins and a one loss versus their Eastern Division counterparts. So who, you ask, has that lone victory? Well, Kentucky, of course. The Wildcats beat Mississippi State by two as time expired. And the West is doing it here, too, 14 to 7. Meanwhile, Kentucky... You, know, you kid around about you talk about Florida's quality wins their biggest ones over Kentucky. It's been a while since we've said that in football <laughs> maybe in basketball. I don't know. But with that Kentucky plays Georgia at home tonight. It'll be a favorite I guess at home for the first time against the Bulldogs in a while. But they're breathing down the necks of the Gators and this isn't helping Florida fans right now. What's going on here in Fayetteville. Certainly not but they're happy that Jared Davis number 40 the middle linebackers back on the field. Willie, the tailback here for Arkansas from the 15 yard line. He'll get the carry off the left side. Only got a yard, maybe two. On Thursday on CBS, Joel McHale stars in the comedy that critics are calling funny and smart. And the fall's best new show, Great Indoors. New episodes Thursday, right after the Big Bang Theory, only on CBS. What a day for football. We got here way early. It was some great tailgating going on outside in a packed house of 72,000. Well, they're showing blitz and they come with it. Allen 
Steps up in the pocket through the pressure throws incomplete intended for sprinkle Marcus May the safety was covering He certainly was and when you watch Florida defensively. It's just blanket coverage They really wanted to try and isolate sprinkle and get him some matchups But again the accuracy of some of the throws we're seeing early on by Austin Allen just aren't there now He had the banged up knee that happened a couple weeks ago, but that was a contusion. He told us he felt good. When his eyes and feet are aligned, he's a deadly accurate quarterback. But he's been off target a couple times, and you have to wonder, the last time he threw the sprinkle, it was a pick six. Maybe he's thinking about that. Right now, the Razorbacks are stuck in neutral a little bit. Third down and nine. Allen Rose to throw. Getting heat, got hit again as he throws into his own sideline, and it's Jared Davis. Who comes off the bench off a bad ankle and makes the hit on the quarterback not too many middle linebackers in college football are three down backers that are as big as him and as physical as him now remember he just left the game with a high ankle sprain they took his shoe off they taped it up we heard Shrift talk about it and he just forces an errant throw in the punt because he's running to the sideline how fast was he closing on a bad wheel right there <laughs> man I hated playing against guys like that because you underestimate their speed they make you pay for it Toby Baker would like to keep it out of the hands of Antonio Callaway, who stands back near his own 40 yard line. He did, but it goes out of bounds at about the 42 yard line. Well, we talked about this being man up week for Arkansas, but Florida's defense, the second in the country, not willing to go down without a fight. Adam Zucker in New York with his Heisman watch presented by the new Nissan Titan Clemson back home after the win at Florida State Deshaun Watson perfection to Deion Kane for the longest play of the year for Clemson 65 yards they did miss the extra point 16 nothing they're up on Syracuse tonight in prime time here on CBS freshman star Jalen Hurts leads number one Alabama for a visit to Leonard Fournette who's coming off a school record 284 yards for LSU Brad Naren thanks Adam Good job by Deshaun Watson. Lamar Jackson didn't hurt himself today either. Seven touchdowns total. Three on the ground, four through the air. This is Florida's best starting field position. Their own 43-yard line. So far, their four possessions, one play, an interception, a touchdown for Arkansas, then five plays, four plays, three plays, all ended in punts. And they have all of 13 yards rushing. They got about three more right there. Tonight at 7 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Speaking of Heisman guys. I tell you what, Austin Allen's a tough guy, man. That was when he went down walking off the field. A little bit banged up, but just such a good player to be able to respond from that. Had the knee drained. Got right back to work on Monday of the off week. Here's a pitch to P. Ryan, and he has swarmed under a loss of a yard. Boy, defense playing extremely well for Arkansas, especially after what happened against Auburn a couple of weeks ago. That was Ledbetter, the guy that Aaron talked about, moved from defensive tackle to the outside, and he set the edge here, Aaron. Yes, he did, buddy. You were all over that. Good job. Gets cracked back and still is able to expand and set that edge and wait for the pursuit to come back side Florida trying to get that run game going remember Arkansas was so good stopping the run a year ago but have struggled this year but they're looking really nice winning their matchup here's another third down 0 for 3 so far today for the Gators what have they got here they got an empty backfield with Del Rio by himself and a whistle Might have had a timeout time taken. Out. We Arkansas. did by Arkansas. We'll take the timeout as well with 11.48 remaining in the half. I started to tell you a little bit earlier tonight at 7 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Nation's leading rusher, Donnell Pumphrey, continues his climb towards the all-time rushing record. San Diego State hosting Hawaii on a 24-hour home of CBS Sports, you've seen this guy a lot in person. I certainly have, and he has a chance by the time this year is over to be the all-time career rushing leader in the history of college football. He's an undersized back, 5'9", about 180 pounds smoking wet. But I tell you what, he <laughs> runs behind his pads. He's a great one-cut runner, good vision, acceleration, and burst. He's a heck of a football player. As Tex in the Rainbow, 7 o'clock tonight, CBS Sports Network here. Another third down situation for Luke Del Rio on the Florida offense. 
and they have not been able to convert one so far today. He's pointing to his three wide receivers out to the left side. Now he's going across the middle and on the run and a first down and then some inside the 40s Brandon Powell. So finally the Gators pick up a third down. They get a big gainer down to the 38 yard line pick up a 21. Cam Dillard the center is the injured Florida Gator right now. That would be a big loss for the Gators. He's had a really solid year and particularly handles all the play calls up front in this offense. He directs protection set the mics. A key integral part up front. They're redoing his knee brace or taking it off I should say on the left knee. There you see number 40 uh, 54 mm. and he got rolled up on by. Friendly fire David Sharp the left tackle we will check on him when we come back. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico halftime report Rick BJ and I get you caught up on all of today's action including number four Texas A&M going down in Starkville Nick Fitzgerald making his opening statement stick Mississippi State takes it 35 to 28 back to Brad and Aaron. Starting center Cam Dillard I took the knee brace off his left knees being helped to the locker room it looks like. The Gators will slide Tyler Jordan the right guard into the center spot and Fred Thompson into the right guard spot. Here's another look and we showed it to you before number 54 and then you see his own tackle David Sharp rolls up on that left knee. So teammates that happens a lot in there. You've been through that. Oh buddy. A bunch. Sharp's a big load of laundry too. Six yeah. six three fifty seven rolling up on there. Florida did pick up the first down on that third down toss to Powell so they're in Razorback territory something we haven't said earlier today at the 38 yard line play fake by Del Rio wants to air it long does and it is intercepted by Josh Liddell. Second interception suffered by Del Rio today. He was trying to tuck it in there to Antonio Callaway. Del Rio just steps into it, but the ball dies on him, and Liddell's just playing center field. No arm strength on that ball. Look how it's wobbling. And that's about as easy as it gets. We talked about Del Rio not getting credited for that earlier interception. Well, that was 100% on him. His momentum carried him into the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed. They're saying that the his momentum carried him into three. the end zone. I think it's First a good down. call, so they're going to spot it where the interception occurred at the three yard line. Brett Bielema doesn't like that. And we'll get another look right here. He certainly doesn't. There's Liddell, catches it right between the three and the four yard line. Antonio Callaway knocks him into the end zone with that momentum. But man, it was almost like Liddell was fielding a punt there. That ball just <laughs> floated and died on him. I thought he was going to call fair catch for a second. <laughs> Could have. So anyway, starting field position, not what they hoped for, but they'll take the turnover. Their second interception of the day, about a yard gain for Raleigh Williams. Liddell, that was his second interception, by the way, of the year. So we had. First Santos Ramirez with an interception return for a touchdown. And then Duke Dawson did it for Florida. Now Liddell at the three yard line with a pickoff. And we've got another man down. And that's that's held to Frodholtz. Starting left guard. We'll check out Helda with 11.05 remaining in the half when we come back. So both teams Aaron in the last five minutes have lost key cogs in their offensive line as throat holes going straight to the locker room. Yeah he's had some big blocks here early he's a big physical converted D lineman doing a really nice job the positions new to him but he's been a physical beast up there for Arkansas and a key part of them being able to run the ball successfully here in this first half. Raleigh Williams in his own end zone and an eye backfield. Behind Austin Allen, he gets the carry. Fires his throw back beautifully. He's got a first down run all the way out to the 18 yard line. And now they've got some room to breathe. By the way, going back to that interception by Josh Liddell, Steve Shaw, the SEC offices in Birmingham, was on the phone with us during the break. 
uh, and telling us that the momentum carrying Liddell into the end zone was a perfect call that the officials made here in Fayetteville. Well, here's wow. a heck of a run by and Williams. Sorry about that, partner. It certainly was. Johnny Gibson's been moved over to that left guard spot. It's a G scheme, meaning he's pulling away from the ball, being a lead blocker, along with the fullback. And once again, a perimeter run into the boundary works for Arkansas. Arkansas has got 86 yards on the ground now after that carry. They lost about three right there. Nice play by Daniel McMillan. We hit the 10 minute mark. 14 to 7 Arkansas. Riley Williams with a six yard touchdown run and Santos Ramirez with an interception return for the score. That's been the scoring for Arkansas. Jim McElwain's Gators only score came also on a pick six by Duke Dawson of 36 yards. Yeah, in our meetings with him this week, he said, hey, we got to go on the road and execute and do what we do. We can't flinch. We must be able to overcome some momentum in a tough road environment, but I think they're going to have to rely on their defense today to get that done for them. Uh, second down and long. Austin Allen rolling to try to find an open man. Does and Drew Morgan. Morgan up across the 30, still on the run out to the 36-yard line. There's his favorite target. The guy is shifty, not the biggest dude in the world. Six-foot senior, but boy, he knows what to do when he gets his hands on the football. He is such a good route runner, Drew Morgan. Does a nice job. Here he is. He's going to pretend like he's going to block. Then he's going to come fine and settle down inside the zone. Single high safety this time by Florida. They crash on the ball, but it opens it up. Drew Morgan's subtle ability to find the holes in the defense and nice route running moves the chains for the Hogs. Drew's second team all SEC last year when he caught 63 balls. Got a couple of big ones today. That was good for 20. And a first down at the 36 yard line. Back to the ground game. Riley Williams off the left side. Good positive yardage. Pickup of about five. Let's get an update. Adams got one in New York for us. All right, Brad, number three, Michigan, all over their former defensive coordinators team. Khalid Hill makes it 28-0. The Wolverines are on pace for 40 or more points for the seventh time this year. A shutout going right now for the Wolverines. Back to you. Well, Jim Harbaugh's got him wound up, doesn't he? he? Certainly does. Got a defense like this one. Williams with 47 yards on the ground here in the first half. After a tough outing against Auburn. Here he comes again. Puts his head down. Goes through one would-be tackler. And he's close to a first down. Got it to the 45. Marcus May was holding on for dear life. It's going to bring up third down and a yard. Really impressed with the edge blocking here. Here you're going to see Dawson try to go inside. He's going to get picked and pinned inside, which breaks down the contain for the defense. Really nice job by Jared Cornelius setting the edge so that his big back can get upfield. And I'm telling you, Arkansas talked about trying to get to the edge of this defense. This is the second best defense statistically in the country, and they're getting run on right now. Let's see if Wheelie gets the call here on third and a yard. He will, and he won't get the first down. Penetration by C.C. Jefferson is what made that play. C.C. Jefferson went down earlier in the first quarter. We talked about his playmaking ability, one of those young defensive linemen, but he got some great penetration there, and penetration is the kryptonite to the running game, and 96 made a heck of a play, forcing the punt. Really nice stop by Toby, the Gators. Toby Baker, second-best punter in the conference out of Memphis University High School. And our seller, Shy Sun, is on that team. They're in the playoffs. Back at Memphis University High School. <laughs> nice kick. Way back to the seven yard line, Antonio Callaway. But he's got some room. Got to the edge. Callaway down the sideline. And tiptoed, stepped out of bounds. He ran out of real estate. But a nice return. Let's see where they're going to spot him out. I think they're going to bring it back to about the 31 yard line, but still 24 yard return. I right there, not that one. And now he's out. There he is, right there, right at the 31. They were on top. Yep, perfectly spotted. But he's a dangerous guy. He scored every conceivable way you can for the Florida Gators in his career. As a punt returner, a kick returner, receiver, rusher, passer. Not many guys can do it in so many ways. 
Ryder Lucas, I think, is the guy down on the field injured. And here you look at the career of Antonio Callaway. Six receiving touchdowns. He's had a kickoff return today, uh, uh, not today, this year, I should say, on a onside kick attempt. And he just he <laughs> picked it up and went 44 yards for a score. So he's done it. And I think they need to find a way to get the ball in his hands more because they've been sputtering on offense. You take away that Brandon Powell crossing pattern, a couple of other plays. There hasn't been much offense before there. No, there certainly hasn't. They're really struggling. Only 61 total yards so far today. They can't run the football. It wasn't an illegal block. Those two just kind of ran into each other. I don't think either one of them saw each other coming, to be honest with you. But it is Ryder Lucas, sophomore out of the Woodlands, Texas. And he appears to be okay. Ironically, it might have been Davis, Jared Davis, who did it, who was the victim of one of his own teammates rolling up on him that he got a shoulder in front. That was <laughs> ultimately he might have done it. Yep. How about your starting linebacker playing on special teams too with a high ankle sprain? Absolutely. They're getting all they can out of him, I'll tell you that much. He's earned a scholarship today. No doubt. Our first down says the Arkansas defense today earned their scholarship. Austin Caps, number 41, was the first guy there and then got help from his Hawk friends and a loss on the play. This is the 110th defense in the country coming into today. Doesn't look like it does it. No, it doesn't. They're playing inspired. They made some moves. We talked about Jeremiah Ledbetter getting moved over to his natural end spot. McTelvin Aguim getting moved to take his place. And then Jamichael Winston starting at that defensive end spot. They're playing good fundamental football right now and winning their matchup big time. Second down at 12, one of two tight ends in the lineup. Goolsby's the motion man is Del Rio in trouble again. Down he goes. Sacked this time by Randy Ramsey. A loss of 12 on the play. Ramsey moved into that starting lineup. He's been a little bit of everything defensive end outside linebacker and he brought the heat this time. Yeah he's starting as the Sam or the strong side linebacker Del Rio drifts a little bit right in the pocket which leads him right to Ramsey. He feels some pressure. He gets spooked unnecessarily I think and made Ramsey's job really easy on Jawad Taylor the right tackle the freshman wasn't sure who to block and so he didn't block anybody. Third and twenty four. Here comes a Razorback crowd. The safe play is a handoff, and it's a big opener. I don't know if he can get a first down, but he got very close. Mark Thompson hurdles his way out to the 38-yard line, about three yards shy of the first. This is just going to be power football, pulling backside guards, getting up into the line of scrimmage. And you see there's only three defensive linemen for Arkansas. This is basically a prevent defense, which is why the saying goes, prevent defense prevents you from winning. That was bending, not breaking, as bad as you can get. I got to tell you though that's a field position changer even though it was a 21 yard run and they didn't get a first down it sure helps out the cause as far as field position and the punt's not going to travel that far although taken on a hop dangerously by Jared Cornelius and Arkansas has got the football back offensively time for our Aflac trivia question who was the first sophomore to win the Heisman Trophy. I personally think that's too easy. But we'll give you the answer a little bit later on. I even knew that one. <laughs> well, we'll only give you a couple of minutes to think about it. You know, we only got six minutes left of the half, so we won't, we won't go too long. Four minutes and 15 seconds actually left in that half. <laughs> I got ahead of myself or behind myself. Arkansas with a touchdown lead, but they have been stalled now on offense their last few series. They've had six drives and they've only had a total of three first downs. Remember, they scored once on a pick six. Here's a big opener, though, by Dabwab Wheelie. And he's out to the 25 yard line. Dabwab, freshman out of Beaumont, Texas, originally committed to Georgia and then flipped over to Arkansas. And Brett Bielema was pretty happy about that. Look how Florida's crowding the line of scrimmage. They're getting too far upfield. And what that's doing is it's taking them out of their run lane. This is a very athletic defensive front, but they've got to play a little bit more physical along the line of scrimmage because they're creating these rush lanes themselves. Arkansas over 100 yards on the ground now. And they'll keep it on the ground. And Whaley 
Again, covers that football with both hands, gets out to the 29 yard line. Good looking running back. 216 pounder, 5'11. He's powerful, he's fast, he keeps that ball high and tight. We noticed that in practice yesterday. And he is going to be a good one. He's already a good one. I should say he might be ending up being a great one. Of course, Thielema at Wisconsin and at Arkansas always having thousand yard rushers, sometimes two of them. <laughs> and so far, Whaley has more yards than Florida does as a team. Thielema told us that he's the most complete running back he's ever recruited. That's saying something. Yes, it is. Second and six. Sprinkle a tight end in motion into the slot. Austin Allen, plenty of time. Floats one and it is caught this time by Sprinkle. First down and his first catch. A 6 6 target, and that time he held up. Just going to be on the crossing route backside. Jeremy Sprinkle has yet to have a drop this year. Look at those soft hands as he just goes out and beats the one on one coverage by Alex Anzalone. They've been trying to target him earlier in the game, but they have been able to when he's been matched up on a safety. But against a linebacker, Sprinkle comes up huge. The last time they threw one in his direction, it wasn't close enough to his hands to be considered a drop. He just didn't get his head around fast enough. And then he makes what was really a great catch right there. First down at the 44. Arkansas has got two timeouts to work with. 2.20 to play in the quarter. And it's Whaley just outside the 45. Arkansas has a good field goal kicker. Should they try to tack three here before the break? Adam McFain has taken over the duties, and he had the only score for him actually a couple of weeks ago at a 54 yard field goal, his career long against Auburn. That they, means they have to get to the 37 yard line on the plus side of the 50, obviously, but we talked about it, Brad. The red zone is going to be critically important here. Arkansas needs to convert these drives into touchdowns. They've got some time and timeouts to do it, but they're taking almost too much time here. Drew Morgan, the wide receiver to the bottom of the screen again, is Austin Allen's favorite target if he really needs one. This time he's going to have to throw short because the pressure is coming, but Riley Williams gets in the open field. Williams knocked out of bounds, but he's got a first down at the 32 yard line. Nice little flip by Austin Allen. We got a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. There was certainly some pressure, but Austin Allen climbs the pocket and goes to his check down. Personal foul. Just block below the waist, number 62 on the offense. Penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. That foul, and I saw it occur in the middle of the field. It was about a mile away from where the play was going. It wasn't necessary. That's a killer. That's Johnny Gibson making his first start. We talked about him in the open. A walk on with a great story makes a huge mistake here. It's those type of plays that can win you ball games. But he made another critical error right there. He might have been 12 yards away from this play. Right there at the 49. I mean, that's just, you know, he's trying to make a play. I understand. He doesn't know at that point where Williams is. But he's coming back in towards the ball, and you right. can't do that. Exactly. That's a big setback for the Arkansas offense. Austin Allen trying to get some of it back, and he's got sprinkled down the sideline. He's got a lot of it back. All of it, almost, to the 34-yard line. Well, this is what it is that they wanted to do is be able to push the ball downfield. They just erased that costly penalty there. They go to their big guy, Jeremy Sprinkle, who's been on fire. As we take a look there at Adam McFain, who may have an opportunity to kick a field goal, but if you're Brett Bielema, you want to get this football into the end zone and not put it on your kicker. Two huge plays by a huge tight end in Jeremy Sprinkle, one of the captains, all six, six of them. That was a 34 yard pickup to the 34. First down there for Arkansas. Williams, right side, break one tackle. Here he goes. All the way down to the 22 yard line. 12 more yards and a first down for Williams. That time it was Jared Davis trying to run underneath. Here he is. He's going to try and get down, but he misses the tackle for another nice game for Arkansas front. That's a little bit of a change up of a play call because the time's running tick, tick, tick. But they execute it beautifully. Under a minute. They'd like to get a touchdown. You saw McFain working up on the sideline as Austin Allen goes to the corner to the end zone. Just overshot Keon Hatcher. Quincy Wilson flag down. 
We'll have to take a look at that. That looked like pretty dang good coverage there by Quincy Wilson. He was in phase, running step for step for Keon Hatcher. And here's the call. Pass interference, number six on the defense. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Big pass interference on Wilson. Here's another look. Yeah, he's got his right hand all over him and grabs him. Wasn't able to see that on the first look, but the officials doing a nice job. They're all over it. Sometimes they allow the hand checking and fighting, but clearly Wilson taking four, five, six steps with that right arm draped around the waist of Hatcher, giving a great opportunity here for Arkansas. Their entire playbook is open with 45 seconds and two timeouts left. They were doing the tango in the end zone, and it's a pass interference, and it's a first and goal at the eight. Austin Allen takes pass inside to Sprinkle, and Sprinkle's got it down around the two. 38 seconds. Arkansas both timeouts still remaining. Timeout. And now they take Arkansas. one. Arkansas. 38 seconds to go. Razorbacks knocking on the door and leading by a touchdown. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Adam Rick and BJ will update you on today's action in college football. You already saw a great one as Navy beat Notre Dame by a point. There's an upset in the SEC. They'll preview Alabama and LSU still to come in our triple header tonight on CBS. That's all coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, which is about 41 seconds of clock time away. Second down and goal at the three-yard line. Arkansas trying to take a two-touchdown lead to the locker room. There's Jeremy Sprinkle. And Morgan's the wide after that way. Austin Allen now reverses his field, trying to run it in himself, and he gets tagged back around the seven-yard line by Duke Dawson. Caleb Brantley got the initial pressure, and that play just didn't look right from the get-go. It certainly didn't. Florida bringing pressure off that outside edge, and it worked beautifully. It almost looked like they were going back to the well to run that same play. That they did the play before Arkansas, the sprinkle. Their third final timeout. So another timeout with 20 seconds this to go. It'll be third down and goal. They'll have one shot at the end zone and then kick a field goal if they can't score. Well, we asked you earlier the Aflac trivia question: Who's the first sophomore to win the Heisman Trophy? I think all the Florida fans got that. <laughs> Tim Tebow in 2007. You might not know who the runner-up was though. Think about that one. This is where the tricky part comes in. Darren McFadden, oh. heck of a running back. Boy, when he's healthy, or when he was healthy, even in the pros, he's something special. Right now, you talk about sophomores, Lamar Jackson, we talked about him today. He had four touchdowns in the air and 185 yards and three touchdowns on the ground for Louisville. I think they put up 58, something like that. <laughs> he's not doing bad, is what I'm saying. No, he's not. I've seen him up close and personal. and. He's easily the most electrifying college football player in this 2016 season. It's his trophy to lose. You just have to wonder with Louisville being in that seven spot in the first week of the college football playoff with their remaining schedule. Can they do enough even with him playing at the level as he is to crack that way into the top four. Remember Austin Allen didn't throw a touchdown pass against Auburn a couple of weeks ago for the first time in nine games. He doesn't have one here today. He's going to have one more shot. He told us yesterday if he really had to go to somebody, it would be Drew Morgan, number 80, who's in the slot to the right. Allen fires. Ends up Morgan. Touchdown. When you're going to have a favorite guy in a favorite spot, and he threw it to a beautiful spot. Touchdown, Arkansas. Well, we asked him yesterday if he had to throw a football to win a football game, what would the route be and who would the receiver be? He said Drew Morgan. It was a 16-yard dig, but he just smoked Marcus May, the safety, for a nice touchdown. That's exactly what Arkansas wanted to do, and the Hogs are ready to play. Well, we thought we were going to be in for a good one. Austin Allen putting the team on his back, getting it done. And welcome back here to Fayetteville. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Drew Morgan, watch the way as he eats the cushion up on Marcus May, puts his foot in the ground, and then gets inside for the screen, or excuse me, for the post route. And credit Austin Allen, some good protection up front. He just floats that ball in a super small window. 
Those touch passes are very difficult, but a good route running by Drew Morgan and Austin Allen back off that injury, feeling really good with his team up by two touchdowns here. An 87 yard drive and 10 plays, a tick under four minutes, and a seven yard touchdown pass. And 16 seconds remain as Florida will bring it out to the 25. That was a huge score for Arkansas because remember Florida gets this ball back to start the second half. So to go up by 14 in this point the Gators who struggled all year long offensively have to be smart about this. We've seen some of the arm strength issues with Luke Del Rio floating footballs up that looked like punts earlier on. Be interesting to see if the Gators take a chance here, take a knee, and maybe go talk about it at halftime. I think if they had another half minute, maybe they try something. And if they had a game, then try to play it. But for 16 seconds, the kind of thing Mark Thompson's going to get the handoff, and they'll head to the locker room and we'll wait and see. Well, Del Rio will throw. Middle screen to Thompson and Thompson in the open field does a nice job to get it out to the 40 but it took up 10 seconds. Florida has all their timeouts. They've got a guy slow to get up. So they did come out and throw. Take a timeout going to talk about it. Timeout. Ness. Florida. Florida first, takes a timeout. timeout. First half. 30 second timeout with 83 yards of total offense in this first half. Well that's been their problem a year ago. They made it to Atlanta the SEC championship game. It's been their problem. You know you look at they score 29 points a game right. Think about they've got three pick sixes this year. They've got an Antonio Callaway kickoff return for a touchdown. You take some of those hidden scores away and they're not scoring 29 points a game in offense. No this is really an offense that's struggling to find its identity and coach Max said sometimes I think I need to trust the offensive line more to run the football. It's about rhythm. It's about timing. They've had a lot of different running backs that can certainly affect it. When you have running backs by committee it throws that timing off but Luke Del Rio with the injury the changes at the quarterback position Austin Appleby coming in and out. They're just. There's nothing for this unit to be able to hang its hat on. And I think to win on the road, particularly in this conference, you have to bring your running game and play defense. Well, their defense will give them a shot today, but their offense really needs to be able to find a way to move the football against a defense that's been very porous all season long. So one play left, barring a defensive penalty. Three wide receivers for Del Rio. Knock it down. Plenty of time. Throw short again across the middle. That's Cronkwright out of the backfield. But he's going to use up the remaining time while he gets it to the 40 yard line. It'll add a few yards to their total offense. That's all it's going to add. Boy, the Hawk fans are digging it here at Reynolds Razorback Stadium as they head to the locker room, leading the 11th ranked Florida Gators 21 to 7. Now it's time for Inside Access presented by AT&T, official sponsor of the SEC. Here's John. Well, Brad, thank you so much. Coach, you wanted to establish this run game coming in here. How have you been so effective on the ground against this tough Florida defense? Well, you know, in the uh, uh, last few weeks, we took a lot, of, a lot of pride in just getting better at what we didn't do well, and we haven't been able to run the football against good competition, one of the best defenses in the country, and our guys are just kind of getting after it. But we got to go in at halftime. We are playing a clean game on either side, take advantage of the looks we're getting, and obviously convert more third downs. Now, Austin Allen threw that pick six early, but he came back with an impressive drive to score that touchdown. What did you tell him early on to call? him down just be him we don't need him to be anybody else but number eight he makes a really good number eight don't try to be somebody you're not don't force it in there step into your throws a little bit and and obviously take advantage of the looks that we get coach good luck in the second Thank half you. so the Razorbacks at home touchdowns by an interception a run and a Austin Allen touchdown pass and they lead 21 to 7 at the half as we had to Adam Zucker and the guys in the New York studio Adam all right, thanks, Brad. The Hogs are eating. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I will show you how Lamar Jackson further bolstered his Heisman chances and how fourth-ranked Texas A&M was stunned in Starkville. After this word from your local station.
and intercepted. Santos Ramirez, touchdown! Williams in the middle of the pile. Williams fights his way all the way. Touchdown! Allen fires. End zone. Morgan, touchdown! Just about set to start the third quarter. Arkansas leading the 11th ranked team of the country by two touchdowns. Jim McElwain's club's in some trouble. John was with him just a moment ago. Coach, you knew you would get Arkansas's best shot. You're down by 14. What did you tell your team at the half? Well, I believe in them. They got to believe in themselves, and we just got to come out. It starts with like winning first down, you know? That's what it is. And, uh, you know, they're getting after us pretty good. Give them all the credit that in the world, and yet, uh, you know what? We'll see it, what kind of team we are in the second half. Your quarterback, Luke Del Rio, is getting pressured. He threw two picks, and then your center, Cameron Dillard, goes down. Is he coming back for the second half? And if he can't, how does that affect the game plan? No, he'll be, he, he messed his leg up, so we got, that's why we got backups, and they'll go in and play their tails off. Good luck in the second half. All right. Well, Aaron Mack wants him to win first down as we take a look at our first half trends. You got, you got to get some first downs. They've only had five of them in the first half. Yeah, there's only been five, and remember, this is the SEC's best. Luke Del Rio not getting it done. Austin Allen playing a little bit better, but the story of this game has been Arkansas's defense outplaying the second-best unit in the country of the Florida Gators. So Florida will get the football first to start the third quarter. Adam McFain to kick. Chris Thompson waits back in the end zone, and he's going to bring it out from five yards deep. Thompson, oh! Collision, the ball is out. I think it's still going to be Florida football, but that was a train wreck. What a hit by Mitchell on the kick coverage. You want to be a kick returner? Okay, go ahead, listen to this. <laughs> that hurts. That's where to set the top. Coming out here in that second half, a clean hit, uses his right shoulder, it's low, jars the ball loose. That it's hurt way up here. Wow. They keep the ball though, they covered it at the 18 yard line. That's where Del Rio and company have to start. Cleveland, the freshman, moves to the left side, they're gonna keep it on the ground. And getting out maybe to the 22-yard line on the ground. Arkansas with a two-touchdown lead. We welcome you back, Brad Nessler, Aaron Taylor. I tell you what, we didn't expect that Arkansas's defense was going to play like this. We thought Florida's defense was going to play like this. We certainly did, but credit Rob Smith, the defensive coordinator of Arkansas, doing a really nice job of making adjustments. Look how well these guys are tackling. I like Florida's strategy to come out here and establish the run. I think they got away from it too early in the first half. But again, Mack was concerned about Florida not winning on first and second down. And here they are, the best third down team in this conference with a third medium to start the second half. They've had struggles on third down. They've had struggles on every down. They had seven drives in the first half. Two were interceptions. Four were punts. And then the half ended. They don't have a receiver with more than one catch. Seven receivers with one catch each. I hate to say it's a big third down when it's this early in the third quarter, but for Florida it is, and there's nowhere to hide for Luke Del Rio. He hits the deck, the ball is incomplete, and Dietrich Weiss was the guy that was putting some heat on it. Fourth down, and Florida's three and out again. Just another remarkable stop that time by Arkansas defensively. Luke Del Rio didn't have anywhere to throw the secondary for the Razorbacks, doing a really nice job. I got to say, Ness, I wonder at some point if we're not going to see Austin Appleby today, whether or not the Gators need to make a change of quarterback to spark something offensively. That's a good thought. Townsend, nice punt again. Jared Cornelius has got a shot at it from the 30. He's dropped in his tracks, so though, at the 31-yard line. Nice punt coverage by Marcel Harris. But if you want to set the tone for the beginning of the third quarter, uh, that might do it right there. Razorbacks back on offense from their own 31 when we come back. Chris Thompson is heading to the locker room. He kind of banged his shoulder up in the first half, and then he was the recipient of that hit on that kickoff return to start the third quarter. I don't really think if he knows which Billy's in, Gaines or Fayette. I'll tell you what, he got blocked. 
And that's exactly what it is you want to do, setting the tone. And that's really been kind of a microcosm of the story of this game. Arkansas just out physicaling Florida in every facet. And a tough day for that guy, Del Rio. And as Aaron said, you wonder at some point if maybe just to try to spark things, they don't bring in Appleby at quarterback. But that's for another series. Right now it's Arkansas with a two touchdown lead and their offense at the 31 yard line. We talked about it in the open. Take a look at that. Arkansas already eclipsing. Quick throw out to Drew Morgan with a couple of wide receivers blocking in front of him. He's got a quick first down. And a pickup of about a dozen. Really nice job by Dan Enos throwing on first down a nice change up just a simple bubble screen with a smoke route out to the outside and good perimeter blocking that time by Jared Cornelius and Keon Hatcher for the first down. You know when we talked to Dan Enos and you and I were talking about this earlier this morning you said they wanted more physicality not just the offensive line they wanted those outside guys to hit some people. Hey man. This is Brett Bielema's team. They are physical. They wanted to get back to being who they are, which is blue collar and getting it done. Straight ahead. A tough yard, maybe, for Riley Williams. Joey Ivey, the first guy there for Florida defensively. That's a really nice job there on first down by this Florida defensive unit. If Florida's going to win this game, I really get the feeling that it's going to have to be their defense that sparks something. We know that they can score defensively. Two pick sixes in the Missouri game by both their quarterbacks, Quincy Wilson and Jalen Tabor. The Gators want to get back in here, Brad. They have to do something to cause a turnover or get some juice back because right now they're playing pretty flat. But that was a really nice job there on first down. We saw Jeff Collins, Florida's defensive coordinator, and his counterpart, Danny Enos, the offensive coordinator for Arkansas. A little chess match going on here. Riley Williams on the toss sweep to the left. Got it out around the 47 yard line. It's still going to be third down, close to six. Take a look at Dan Skipper. Here he is right here. He's going to be able to pull out and go to the left hand side. They move him in space a lot. One of the areas that he's really improved is getting out on the outside edge. Just that body presence is enough to get Quincy Wilson out of the way, bringing up a third and medium. And guy that's down is Alex Anzalone, the outside linebacker, had a big game last week against Georgia. Sure did. Five tackles and half a sack. And Jeff Collins uh, knows him well. He's from that same area of Pennsylvania or coached up there in Division Three, I should say, and he's He's one of their leaders. Looks like I can't. It looked like he's holding his left wrist, but who knows? We'll check on it with 11:58 remaining in the third quarter. There's Alex trying to make the play on Williams. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by LGV20. The Home Depot. USAA. And by Sonic. Teams Arkansas with one back in 64 with Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson and all those guys in Florida. Three of them 96 06 and 2008. And one of those of course Steve Spurrier Steve and Jerry's wife were up here and we had a chat before the game the head ball coach now an ambassador. Which he kind of likes because he gets to take all the high rollers after dinner the night before the game. <laughs> and then he can come and he doesn't have to have a headset on. He doesn't have to throw a visor. It's all all easy work. I think it's pretty safe to say that Steve Spurrier is enjoying and winning at retirement. <laughs> Anzalone going off. Still looks like they're holding his left arm. Meanwhile, it's third down and six for Arkansas. Need to get to the 47 of Florida. Austin Allen, plenty of time to throw. Throws a dart. To Morgan. First down. Again, his favorite target, Drew Morgan, the senior out of Greenwood, Arkansas, and they'll move the chains. Drew Morgan doing a nice job of getting himself open here. He also had Jared Cornelius wide open on a slant route, but he hits the stop for Morgan to move the chains, and Arkansas dominating here on third down, putting very nice drives together on Austin Allen's arm. Back in Florida territory. Just tucked inside the 39 yard line. Eight guys in the box, single high safety. This is about to turn into a nine on seven drill. They're going to keep it on the ground. And 
Williams does a nice job diving forward to the 33-yard line. You know, with the Florida, a couple of guys banged up now. Jeff Collins was talking to us about how they cross-train guys to play in different positions. They're going to have to do that now. Yeah, Kylan Johnson's coming in for Alex Anzalone, but Anzalone was a great story a week ago against Georgia as well because he took all the reps at the Mike linebacker position because they didn't think that Jared Davis was going to play. So when Davis played, Anzalone went back to his weak side linebacker position at five tackles and a half a sack at a position he didn't practice all week. That one Whaley back in at tailback, and we have a flag. We had too many penalties today, which has been nice. False start. 62 on the offense. Penalty is five yards. Still second down. Let's check in with John. Well, you mentioned that cross training, how they work their defense here, but the defensive coordinator, Jeff Collins, told us it all comes from his days as a D3 coach. He was 24 at Albright College. He said he didn't have the biggest budget, so he had to train the entire defense as a group instead of individual positions. Well, he learned that because of that, they were able to fly around and play faster and have trust in each other. That's something he's brought with him here to Florida. Yeah, interesting story. He's a heck of a defensive coordinator. Today's team struggling a little bit. It's Morgan. And a wide out screen. Didn't get much blocking. And only got about a yard out of it. Ironically enough, talking about cross training, a lot of the NFL teams are doing it now. My friend Dan Quinn does it with the Atlanta Falcons. And he actually was a defensive coordinator in Florida about, <laughs> I don't know, six years ago or yeah. something. But they move guys around. They got Vic Beasley, you know, playing outside linebacker, defensive end. Brooks Reed doing the same thing. They move uh, Claiborne around inside and outside. And it really works for them. You know, they come up with some uh, plays and some, I think it keeps everybody fresh, you know. They know everybody else's position. No doubt. Keeps you fresh, but it also keeps you abreast of what your buddy's doing when you know how the whole picture is supposed to work together. So that whole part approach has been very successful for a lot of people. They're down in long Arkansas. Allen comes up firing over shot Keon Hatcher. Could have been a first down at about the 25-yard line, but the pass too, out, too far out in front of him as Tabor was on the coverage. A couple times a day from Austin Allen, we've seen some miscommunication where the receiver zigged and Austin Allen zagged or right there <laughs> trying to hit Cat, uh, Hatcher and just overthrows him. Nice stop that time by Florida to get themselves off the field. They're going to be backed up here potentially, but that's the start of what hopefully will be some good news here in the second half of the Gators. It'll be Baker now to punt. He's had 11 punts inside the 20. He'd like to drop one of them. Inside the 10 somewhere here. And it's going to be just that at about the six yard line. And Callaway's got to take a fair catch there. So well done by the Arkansas punter. Florida, their offense sputtering and now in a hole again inside their own 10 when we come back. Tiger Stadium, Alabama. Going down, Jonathan Allen. LSU. Large the boom. That will be a beauty tonight. What's going to give? Alabama doesn't give up anything on the ground. Leonard Fournette healthy, back in rare form. Alabama and LSU tonight. Vern, Gary, and Allie will have it for you. 8 o'clock on CBS, and that's what we will be watching, my friend. Well, I'll tell you what, that's going to be a line of scrimmage game there now. The Tide doing a really nice job a year ago against Leonard Fournette. Only gave him 1.6 yards per carry. He's healthy and back. But I think it's going to take the arm of Danny Etling to get things done now offensively for the Tigers. Florida keeps it on the ground, and they got smashed again. Maybe a yard gain on the play. And Florida today with their drives, eight of them, five punts, two interceptions, and the half ended. And the longest drive was five plays. You can't win that way. They've got 104 yards of total offense. When you consider that Arkansas basically has twice as many plays, the Razorbacks running 49. This Florida team, 25. And here they are with no gain on the last one, second down and 10. Mark Thompson's got his feet on the goal line. Luke Del Rio's got his feet in the end zone and throws incomplete. Luckily for him, there was no holding call in the end zone. Brooks Ellis, the middle linebacker, was applying some heat. And out's third down and 10, and it's going to get a little rocky on Luke and company down there inside the five-yard line. Here come the Arkansas fans already. Yeah, it's been interesting on third down. We haven't seen Arkansas bring a whole lot of pressure. They did on that last one. 
And it forced Luke Del Rio to throw the football under duress on the outside with the bootleg. But remember, pressure has been Del Rio's problem. They've struggled here on third down. Can they finally muster something and find a way to move the chains? Del Rio swings it out to Thompson in the flat. Made one man miss. They'll only get to the 12, though, as Dietrich Wise tracked him down from behind, and Florida's going to have to kick from their own end zone. Just a great effort by Dietrich Wise, who's been banged up. They're only using him really on third downs because he's been so hurt. So Jamichael Winston gets the start today, but it's old number 48 coming up with another great third down. I'll tell you what, man, Arkansas has been pretty dang good on both sides of the football today. Johnny Townsend is two yards deep in his own end zone. High spiral, deep kick, way back at the 29, and then given ground to try to gain, and that is not going to work eventually for Jared Cornelius. He did a lot of running around, didn't gain much though. Florida still can't get anything going on offense. It'll be the offense of the Hogs with a two touchdown lead when we come back. Tuesday, America votes for president, and CBS News is your place for results. Award winning original reporting, expert analysis, live nationwide. Morning, evening, and prime time. It's election day Tuesday, only CBS. Well, it was man up week, as John talked about earlier. That was the rallying cry. I'd say they have manned up so far, E.T. They certainly have in a big way, Brad. And that's Brett Bielema. I mean, you consider the fact that coming off a loss, he's 8-0 in SEC plays. Good in November, 24-12 and overall record. They felt that they were hurt and that their pride, that they showed up in a way that wasn't like them. They challenged them. They all took responsibility and accountability. And they're about 22 minutes away from knocking off the number 11 team in the country with good physical line play on both sides of the line of scrimmage. New tail back in right now for the first time. T.J. Hammonds, little guy for the Razorbacks. He is lightning quick and he can get to the edge, and he did. And he cuts back to the middle of the field. T.J. Hammonds, the freshman, all the way down to the 45-yard line. Little change of pace. Yeah, those pin and pull schemes are going to come down and get outside once again, running the football into the boundary. This one's coming back, I think, but it gives you a little taste of what this guy can do. He is so explosive and so fast. And remember, this is one of the faster defenses in the country, and he made them look flat footed like they were sitting in quicksand. It might be Jared Davis down again. How many times has he been on the deck Personal and foul. come back? Legal block below the waist, number 50 on the offense. Penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. That's a second penalty like that against Arkansas today, this time by Jake Rollerson. And it is Jared Davis down from Florida. Rollerson's plan for Froholt, and Johnny Gibson was the one that had an injury or, or a flag earlier, and Enos is frustrated. That was exactly what they wanted. They had some juice going, feeling confident. Had the play call they wanted, and it was working. And yep. now it's all coming back for naught. 26 yard gain is negated. And again, trying to get Jared, the senior, out of Kingsland, Georgia, back to his feet. He's like Robocop or something. He'll go over there for a play, and he'll be back out there, <laughs> middle linebacker. Now Jake Rollerson was the right guard. They felt like they needed to get bigger and more physical up front, so they put Johnny Gibson in his place, who's 6'4", 344 pounds. But because Yelda Froholt went down, Rollerson's been playing. But keep an eye on Davis right there. You know, he's just pulling up on his own again. Huh? Yeah. No, he didn't get hit again. Here's the deal with a high ankle sprain. It's basically the tissue between the two lower leg bones. So every time you step and put weight on it, it expands. It's virtually impossible to protect. The fact that he's even out there is remarkable. It's almost better to break your ankle than have that problem. It's, it's bad. And people don't understand that. They go, he's got a sprained ankle. Get out there. It's, that's not the way it works. Well, here, let's take a look at the earlier Jared Davis injury again a non contact injury but you notice as soon as he put his foot on the ground there was no twisting of the ankle they've taped it up pretty heavily so it won't move but there's a no real way to be able to protect that 
and you see he's just out there playing on pride. You see him getting tended to on the sideline looking frustrated because he wants to be a big reason why his team gets back in as we're taking a look at Wallace for Arkansas who's banged up as well. Wallace was a guy that was trying to block Davis and really didn't get to him. Neither one of them actually collided that much. Wallace the right tackle out there playing on guts as well. He's been struggling with a foot injury he took some time off during the bye week didn't practice much during their off week but as they got into game week. He started playing and that's exactly what they're looking at on that right side. Colton Jackson I think is going to be the guy to take his place a redshirt freshman who's also 6 6 but not as big as Brian Wallace not too many people are Brian goes about 335. And he's up and walking on his own. Garrett Davis you know is just itching to get back out there. He's a guy that's going to be a great player at the next level. Had so many big games. Vanderbilt this year he had a career high 15 tackles. Aaron already mentioned great game, leading tackler against Georgia and Jacksonville last week, including two and a half tackles for loss. He was all over the place and just made it miserable for the Bulldogs offense. And you feel bad for him because he wants to be out there. And, and at some point today, it's got to be the end of the day for him, I would think. Competitors want to compete. Yep. Second down at 11. Whaley back in at tailback for the Razorbacks. And we got some motion and it might be Robertson who just picked up a penalty in the open field a little while ago. Number 50 on the offense. Penalty is five yards. Second down. You, you can't do that. You're shooting yourselves in the foot. This Arkansas offense is now starting to work backwards. This offensive line only had six holding penalties all season coming into this ball game, but they've been very inconsistent. And that's because they're mixing and matching because of the injuries. Yeah. It's really hard to get consistency when you have so many new faces and new places. Austin Allen was hoping not to have a second down at 16, but he does. A little bit of a play fake. I think his tailback went the wrong way. And with that, that play never looked right from the get-go, and he'll go down, courtesy of David Reese, the linebacker that took care of Davis' spot in the middle. And it's going to be third down in a mile. I'm telling you what, man. Arkansas may want to punt here on third down and get this drive over with. <laughs> Just a play fake. Trying to go downfield, but when things don't go the way they're supposed to, it throws the timing off. And Arkansas, since they've come out here in the second half after a pretty decent drive early, have been steadily marching their way backwards. This is a heck of an opportunity if you're Florida to try and flip this field and get this ball back, hoping your offense can get anything going on that side of the ball. Defensive coordinator Jeff Collins over that sideline, just hoping that Arkansas makes a mistake here on third down and long. And they don't. Morgan, what a catch! Got drilled by Harris, but he held on. You're not going to see too many better than that one. No, the middle of the field was open there. Two high safeties. Just a nice seam route, a skinny post by Drew Morgan. He knew he was going to get hit. He took a huge shot, but showing you those soft hands. That might put him over 100 yards receiving. He is one tough dude. Oh, he plays with a chip on his shoulder. Nobody thought he was big enough. Nobody respected him. You see a penalty now thrown on Arkansas. Brett Bielema is way out the hash mark. That might have something to do with it. And he's in David Smith's face. I don't know if this is going to be on Brett or if it's something else, but uh, he was almost to midfield. You see him pleading his case. This is going to be an interesting call. There is no foul for unsportsmanlike conduct on the coach. He was checking on an injured player. I was thinking that myself. He was, you know, his favorite player probably is Drew Morgan on the whole team. <laughs> he just wanted to go out there and see if he's all right. So they pick up the flag. It's a first down. Morgan, I said he might have gone over 100 with that tough catch. He is at 96 yards. Not seven carries, uh, seven catches, and a touchdown. I would expect to see the run game get dialed up here. Put it on your offensive line, get lathered up, take control of the line of scrimmage, and ice this game. Two tight ends, they give it to Raleigh Williams, straight up the gut, exactly as Aaron called it down to the 49 yard line. A nice play there. Let's go back to that Morgan cat. He gets drilled, going up high over the middle, outstretched <laughs> with the flipper. With the flipper, Marcel Harris 
right in the bread basket. I'm an old wrestling fan. I know you and Ric Flair are pretty good friends. That was in the solar plexus. Woo! Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> Second down. And a long two. Round game again. Trying to find a hole and nowhere to run that time for Raleigh Williams. And Gavonis Davis is the first guy there. Tell you what, on the play before that, there were a couple flatbacks, just some really beautiful blocks. That time up front by Brian Wallace, the play before that. But to Florida's credit defensively, they bowed their neck there and got a nice stop. Now, this is a third and short opportunity for them to get themselves off the field. Maybe you get Austin Allen off some play action, get him outside the pocket. To give him a two way go. And not against a little option action here as well. Third down and three. Allen to throw. Nope, Allen not to throw. Caleb Brantley. Boy, that pocket just collapsed in a hurry, and it's fourth down. And now Brantley's shaking up, and there's flags on the far side of the field as well. So many guys going down. Caleb Brantley just. Prototypical three technique. 6'2, 300 pounds. Lightning quick, great first step. Hard to see kind of what happens there. The second sack of the season. I had knocked the wind out of himself. He drilled Austin Allen so hard. No, oh man, don't help me up. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet. <laughs> After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number 70. Penalty is 15 yards. It will be fourth down. That is number 70's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Now the big fella, Dan Skipper, the left tackle, and that's going to change field position here because it's fourth down and they were going to punt anyway. But this is going to give Florida, I would think, pretty good field position on the receiving end for Antonio Callaway of this upcoming kick. Here's Dan Skipper up at the top of your screen. This is just a finish block, a great pass that stones him, but he keeps going to and through the whistle <laughs> and right there just knocks CC Jefferson on his rear end. I like Dan Skipper man he's taken a lot of heat over the years for his playing style and a lot of people thought it was a dirty play against Texas A&M a couple years ago that called that touchdown back but he's really improved as an offensive lineman I think his coach Kirk Anderson's going to be kind of with what he saw there. I was just thinking that. I don't think it'd be that mad unless it changes the complexion of the game. Somehow Callaway dropped the ball, but it goes out of bounds around the 22 yard line. That's where Florida will start offensively with 317 to go in a quarter. And now Quicken Loans presents today's scholar athletes. Luke Del Rio from University of Florida. GPE smart on the field and smart in the huddle for the most part. Brooks Ellis, how about this guy? Is up for the Campbell Award on top of being the leading tackler and the captain of the defense for Arkansas. Quicken Loans commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Florida and Arkansas's general scholarship fund. Enjoyed our conversation with Brooks Ellis, a three year starter. He's a smart, productive linebacker that can diagnose plays quickly, plays downhill. Uses great anticipation, the best tackle on this defense. Jordan Cronkright is in the backfield with Florida, but they come up throwing and they get it out to Callaway. And Callaway breaks free down the sideline at least momentarily before he's run out of bounds by Dwayne Eugene. They got to get this guy the football if they're going to win this football game. You're spot on, Brad. I was just thinking that, that we need to see more out of Callaway. He's such an explosive player. They got to get the ball to his hands. The problem is they can't throw the football downfield. The intermediate and deep shots just haven't been there. So get the football out in space on the perimeter to your best playmaker. Good play call there in execution. Under three in the third as Del Rio loads again on first down. Throw short to Jordan Scarlett. And Scarlett, nice run after catch by Jordan before he's run out of bounds. And he's going to have another first down. Pickup of about 14. Are you starting to feel the momentum change yeah. down there? Oh, yeah. So is everybody else in this stadium. It's getting quiet. Arkansas really putting themselves in a bind potentially and Florida's got a great opportunity here about to cross midfield. Everything they've dialed up so far has been working. Three wide outs for Del Rio. Wants to throw in the flat but that's covered and now finds an open man. And it's Tyree Cleveland who got to midfield before he's put down by DJ Dean. I like DJ Dean. He's an athletic, physical cornerback that'll come up and hit you. 
But Del Rio doing a nice job again of taking what the defense gives him. He's letting the game come to him. They're also using a little bit more tempo, yeah. and I think that helps him. You, you play more, you react faster, and you think less. That's his offensive coordinator, Doug Nussmeyer, on the sideline. Second down and eight from midfield. Del Rio, plenty of time in the pocket again. Going deep. Man out there. We're going to have an interference call, I think. No flag? No. No. Freddie Swain, the intended receiver. Andre Tolliver was covering. Andre Tolliver, the DB that's been targeted almost the most on this team. Remember, in college football, there's no such thing as face guarding. There is no contact. But again, another underthrown football by Luke Del Rio brings up a third and long here. Obviously, Luke thought what I thought for a second. No call, third down. I thought it was good. One out of seven on third downs today for the Gators offense. Going to bring pressure. They're going to change the picture. Not everybody will come. He is pressured, throws while he's going down, incomplete. Dietrich Wise, who didn't start today because he'd been banged up. He doesn't look banged up to me right now. <laughs> he looks fired up, not yeah, banged up. Yes, he does. And I'll tell you what, this is what we expected Rob Smith to do. Crowd the line of scrimmage. They only bring five. Against five-man pressures, Luke Del Rio's accuracy goes down significantly. It took almost three and a half quarters to get to it, but finally moving up front pays dividends for Arkansas. Johnny Townsend's been a busy putter. Cornelius will have to call for the fair catch. He takes it around the 13-yard line with a minute 34 remaining in the third quarter. Tomorrow on CBS, NCIS Los Angeles gets into dangerous waters when one agent becomes shark bait. Don't miss a new episode of NCIS Los Angeles tomorrow, right after 60 minutes, only CBS. Well, there's been times today both these teams have felt like their quarterbacks were shark bait a little bit. No doubt. And there's the numbers on the two signal callers. Allen with a touchdown today after not having one a couple of weeks ago against Auburn. And so far, two picks today for Luke Del Rio, including a pick six in the first quarter that got the scoring going for Arkansas. Combined, those two have more touchdowns to the defense than the receivers. <laughs> not good. Willie in a tailback and a little draw play. And he's going to have to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Florida knows that Arkansas wants to run the football, establish the line of scrimmage. It's a little too early to get to your four-minute run game where you're just trying to ice the clock. I think they need to still mix and match their play calling. But as we get here and approach the end of the third quarter, you better believe that Brett Bielma, particularly the way that they lost to Auburn a couple weeks ago, is going to want to run the football and ice this game. Flat that would be a tough catch. Sprinkle got kind of turned around. The pass was not really on target anyway. And it's going to bring up third down. Yeah, Sprinkle has a really great catch radius, meaning you throw it anywhere near him. We saw him make a beautiful catch, laying himself out earlier. But when the ball's behind you like that and you're backpedaling like Michael Jackson, it's really hard to bring that down. <laughs> Brian Jackson gave him a little shove, too, when he was trying to get out the pattern. That didn't help his cause too much. So it's third and ten. We're just under a minute remaining in the third quarter. Arkansas three for 15 against Auburn a couple weeks ago. Not the best here in the conference. I'd be looking for Morgan, who's the motion man right now. They've been moving him around and finding. There he is. Allen's in trouble, though. He can even get the pass away. And it was Drew Morgan, the intended receiver. He got tangled up, and now the flags fly in late. It's on Marcus May. Drew Morgan got himself open, but there was pressure, so Allen had to pull the ball down, so then it became the scramble drill, which makes it really hard, and Marcus Mays is going to put his hand around Morgan. Pass interference on the defense, number 20. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Marcus May with the pass interference. And there was some great pressure up inside. There's Drew Morgan on the hash right there. He's slow playing it. Bam, he's open, but because of the pressure, he can't throw it. So then he's going to mirror the quarterback. There it is right there. Really hard to defend if you're free safety Marcus May, which is why he grabbed him. 
And it's a free fresh set of downs for the Razorbacks. So even if Drew Morgan doesn't catch it, he affects the passing game. Picks up a first down by penalty. Now back on the ground go the Hawks. Pile up around the 30 yard line. Raleigh Williams with the carry. And we may not have another play before the end of three. Brett Bielema's teams here at Arkansas have always been good in November. This is the best record he's had in four years at this point of the season, the first week of November at five and three. They've usually been three and five or four and four. Jim McElwain's team comes in with just one setback, but they are 15 minutes away from taking a blow on the road here that they were not expecting as the quarter comes to a close. The Razorbacks will hold up those four fingers while they head to the sideline. They've been pretty strong. Even guys that didn't start the game like Dietrich Wise flying high in Fayetteville. End of three. Arkansas 21. Florida 7. We'll return to Fayetteville right after this message and a word from your local station. Not only an excellent receiver, but an excellent public speaker. That's Drew Morgan in between the third and fourth quarter, giving his team the speech that he hopes 15 minutes from now will give them their sixth win of the year and an upset over the 11th ranked team in the country. To start the fourth quarter, second down and seven for the Hawks from their own 30. Florida School about Jared Davis. Play action for Allen, wants to throw a screen out in the flat to Riley Williams with a convoy in front. Williams breaking tackles all the way out to the 47 yard line. Nice job offensively of mixing it up. And Riley Williams with a big catch and run there. Just really good job of running that screen. We've seen that earlier, but Yelda Froholt and Frank Ragnow, number 51 and number 72, getting out front. 50, excuse me. And just a nice job by Raleigh Williams. When you run those screens on first down, you're expecting pressure. It baits the defense to get upfield. Great play call and execution there. Boy, and he set that up. Didn't yes, he? he did. He got all of the blocking and then the cut back to the middle. And now on the carry, takes it into Florida territory. And that's a great point that you make, Brad, because I think that Florida's having the opposite problem on offense. Raleigh Williams has gotten the lion's share of the reps and when you're a back that knows where the offensive line is going to be you can each help to set each other up so that last screen pass was a perfect example of Raleigh Williams working behind an offensive line and the result was a huge pickup on first down Raleigh 20 carries 87 yards and that touchdown early in the game he gets a breather and Devo Whaley comes in the freshman to take his spot and he'll get the handle off the left side he breaks a tackle probably going to have a holding call but he had a good run down to the 40. Oh my goodness. And Frank Ragnow, the center, been through so much adversity, had a beautiful block on that. Holding number 70 on the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Foolish Replay, penalties up front, really costing this offensive line. Dan Skipper, here he is right here. Unfortunately, he's going to negate a really good block. By number 72, Frank Ragnow, the center. Watch this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's 100% beef pancakes <laughs> on the side right there, baby. So, Skipper, that's two penalties this uh, in the last 10 minutes or so. He had the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after playing through the whistle and almost to the next play. And now the holding call backs him up to the 41 yard line. Second down, 16. Ellis ran into a sack, but a throwback screen. And here goes Ray. That one really all the way to the 35 yard line on a first down. How can he still go? As a matter of fact, helmets coming off. About 14 guys involved in a scrum, and he comes out of the pile with a first down. This Arkansas team is firing on all cylinders. Just going to be a throwback screen, taking advantage of really good aggression. Dan Skipper making up for that holding call with a beautiful peelback block inside. He's going to check. He's going to see somebody coming. He's going to be able to set his foot in the ground and spring Whaley. And then here's the strum with the leg drive. This is what <laughs> Arkansas didn't do against Auburn, but they may knock the number two defense in the country off today if they keep that up. Back to Riley Williams. 
Short gain on the play. You don't give Austin Allen a whole bunch of credit on that throwback screen because he became a Gator sandwich as soon as he let go of that thing. He absolutely did, and that's what allowed the play to be successful because he sucked those guys to him, which is what created the space for the big pickup afterwards. There's an art to run in good screens. Here he is. He turns his back. He knows he's going to feel it. He just gets collapsed on by both defensive ends, Jefferson and Davis. See, that's two pieces of white jersey that makes that sandwich. <laughs> now Raleigh Williams straight up the gut, got inside the 30. It's going to bring up third down. That play had a chance there to maybe be a big springer, but Austin Cantrell, the fullback, didn't get as clean of a block as he would like. And now another Gator down on the field, Kylan Johnson, who's playing for the injured Alex Anzalone. They're running Goes out of down. guys. Man. 11.53 remaining in the football game. We'll be right back. <laughs> nice grab there. Geico game recap. Del Rio picked off early in the first quarter. By Santos Ramirez, a pick six. That gave Arkansas the seven point lead right off the bat. And then the interception return by Florida cut it to 14 to seven. So we had two pick sixes, one by each team. Then Arkansas, Drew Morgan's had a big game, including that touchdown catch. Got seven catches, including the score that put him up 21 to seven before halftime. And that was the Geico game recap, and we're still right there, 21 to 7. So the same score we had at halftime. We went through a scoreless third quarter, and at this point, Arkansas would just like 11 minutes and 53 seconds to burn off that clock right now. And they've had a nice time-consuming drive. They're doing it in bits and pieces on the ground, screen passes. We'll see what they do now on third down and a long six. 19 plays. In the opponent's territory, in this case at the 34 yard line, number 20 is coming up, and Florida's had one. And that's not good. No, that's not going to win you a lot of ball games. I think the Gators are going to need for their defense to step up and make a play. They were struggling a little bit early in this game on third down, but have buckled down recently, particularly here in the second half. This is going to be a big third down and six coming up for this defense, who remember has been gashed on some screen plays so they might not want to be as aggressive here giving Austin Allen some time. Not only that Aaron they got two true freshman linebackers in there because of injuries now. Boshan Joseph and David Reese. This is the ninth play of the Arkansas drive with the clock rolling down to 11:35. Should be a false start here. No flag. Looked like Cantrell was in motion. Meanwhile Raleigh Williams bounced out the back side of that inside the 20. That's putting him over 100. I agree with you. That didn't look right, but none of the offensive linemen moved, and nobody got inside the neutral zone. Just a beautiful run and effort that time by Williams to maintain his balance following his blocks. Another good perimeter blocking. Gets that hand down is just enough to get over the line to gain. I guess Cantrell, the tight end that was in the slot, was just moving laterally and not forward, so no penalty. First down, back in the red zone. With 10.55 to go. And it's Whaley. He earns a yard, maybe, maybe two out of it. As we take a look at the Verizon red zone. Two trips, two touchdowns. Arkansas will take that all day long. That's the story of the game, really. I mean, we talked about the importance of Arkansas being able to convert their opportunities in the red zone after the dueling pick sixes we had early on in the game things kind of settled down Arkansas's ability to drive the field and pay those drives off with touchdowns is what has them up 14 points here on the number 11 team in the country so now on the season Arkansas's offense has had 39 possessions in the red zone and scored 26 touchdowns that's not too bad here's the end of round Cornelius cuts it back up inside still Florida stayed with it and a short gain Maybe a yard on the play. It's going to bring up another third down, but now we're ticking inside 10 minutes. It's exactly what Arkansas wanted to do, and I thought that Cornelius made a bad read there. Austin Allen had gotten out to the outside and was setting up a block perfectly. A lot of times you want 
to get the foot in the ground and get north and south, but here's a third and long opportunity. I know it'd be a small win, but for the Gators, you'd love to force Arkansas to kick a field goal here. Arkansas is the top team in the SEC in time of possession at over 35 minutes. They're number four in the country in that capacity. Right now, they're just trying to chew up more of that clock. But this one is a long third down, third and eight. Allen fires going to his left, and it's incomplete. Intended for Drew Morgan. And so now they bring out the field goal unit. You got to give a lot of credit to the Gators there for finding a way to get themselves off the field. Yeah. Look at those guys. They're tired, man. Hands on the hips, heads down. They're not running to the football like they were earlier. It's a tired unit. They've been out there a long time. They certainly have. Their offense hadn't given them any rest, and you add the injuries to that. Adam McFain, four for four on the year, his longest 54. This should be a chip shot, and he just tucked it inside the right upright. Three more for Arkansas, and now they lead by three touchdowns. Abby Whaley in the scrum, part of that long drive that led to three. And it's McFain that gives the Razorbacks a 24-7 lead. Adam Zucker in New York with this Ford update. The sun is starting to go down in Baton Rouge as we get set for number one Alabama's visit to Death Valley in 13th ranked LSU. Coming up at 8 Eastern here on CBS. Tigers on the field. Some early warm-ups now as they hope to end a five-game losing streak to the Tide. Back to Fayetteville. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Napa. New York Life. Direct TV. And by Chick-fil-A. Adam said the sun was setting in Baton Rouge. It's about to set on the 11th ranked team in the country, too, unless they can come up with something in a hurry. That drive, Aaron, 68 yards, 13 plays, 7 minutes, 20 seconds for Arkansas. That's the key ingredient right there. Absolutely. McFain, who hit the field goal with the kickoff, it'll go to the seven yard line to Cleveland. And Tyree Cleveland got across the 25. Swarmed under there. And so with 9.06 remaining in the ball game, Florida needs some offense, a bunch of it in a hurry. I wonder if they're going to make a change at the quarterback position, but it doesn't look like it. Looked like Luke Del Rio was coming back in. I mean, with the way this offense is played, you have to wonder if nine minutes is enough time to score 17 points to tie this thing up if right. you're the Gators. Remember, they haven't scored anything on offense so far today. The touchdown came on an interception return for a score. Tyree Cleveland, the guy that was on the kick return, is still down at the 24-yard line. That's unfortunate. Cleveland, a true freshman out of Houston, went to Westfield High School. He's a long receiver that can kind of stretch the field vertically. Had a nice post route that he hit early on in that Missouri game that I saw. He's one of those players that can help Florida get back in this game because he can run with the football after he gets it in his hands, but he looks like he's in a lot of pain. And man, how about yeah. the injuries today? No, they're going to have to have two planes to go home one for the guys that are healthy and the rest for the other ones. 906, remaining 24 7 Arkansas. With 9.06 to play, trails 24 to 7. Their offense has done zero today. They've had so many guys banged up, it's almost impossible to keep track of. Get a load of this. I mean, I know they're not going to run the football now because they don't have time. They came in, Arkansas, giving up 331 yards a game in SEC play and 17 touchdowns. So far and away, the worst in the conference. And I don't even tell you who's second. They've given up. 25 yards on the ground today. Did they come to play on defense or what? <laughs> Man, they buckled their junk and got ready, and they've been getting after the Gators. First down, Florida at the 26. Del Rio throws quickly this time out to Callaway on a wide out screen, and they've had a hard time getting him the ball. That's only the third time he's touched it, but he does. 
pick up a first down. Just before we came back from commercial, that was the very thing we were talking about. Hey, Florida has to go back to the things that were working for them. Those bubble screens and smoke routes and some crossing routes are about the only thing that they've had success on today. They run that there on first down, and it works. Del Rio, now he's going to go to Kelly again on the wide side. Nice catch, nice throw, and out of bounds around the 49. Where has this been the whole day? I'll tell you what, that was a beautiful throw by Luke Del Rio there. And that's two touches in a row from Antonio Callaway. Here he is up here at the top of the screen. Keep an eye on him. He seems to have the hot hand right now. Remember, they've only been in Arkansas territory once all day. It would have been twice had he held on to that, and it would have been another first down, but it skips through his hands incomplete. So they go to number 81, three plays in a row, and now he'll have to get a breather and go out. C.J. Wharton, I think, is going to come in to take his spot. So it's second down at 10. Clock stopped with 8.21 remaining in the ballgame. And if you're Arkansas defensively, you have to be careful here not to take your foot off the gas pedal. This Florida team has looked pretty good here to start this drive. There we go. And a crossing route incomplete intended for Jordan Cronkwright. Nice coverage, though, by Dwayne Eugene. He's been getting beat up a little bit by the media around here, and he's had a heck of a game. He has, man. And that's really the sign of a competitor, man. When you get punched in the mouth, knocked in the dirt, how are you going to respond? We opened the show talking about whether or not Arkansas was going to fold their tent or decide to step up, and they've done that in a big way here. Here's another crucial third down, something they've dominated all game long. The fans are loving it, third down and 10, because Florida's only converted one of those today. Play action, Del Rio in some trouble, got it out to his tight end who got buried in his tracks by Brooks Ellis. We talked about changing the picture on Luke Del Rio as Florida's going to go for it here. There's Brooks Ellis dropping into his coverage. He's in man coverage right now. He sees what's happening trying to get the football to DeAndre Goolsby, and the team's leading tackler comes up huge. You said he was their best tackler, and that was a form job right there. It's fourth down. No pressure that time. They showed blitz. Let's see what defensive coordinator Rob Smith, who's called a beautiful game so far this afternoon, dials up here. They're going to mug the line of scription or line of scrimmage and make Del Rio sort it out and communicate. Fourth and ten. Throwing off his back foot and out of desperation, but a flag flies in. There was contact back there in the back. Andre Tolliver might have gotten tangled up with Brandon Powell. And that quiets the crowd and will give Florida a first down. It certainly Pass did, Brooks Ellis. On the defense, number five. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Keep your eye here on the play clock. Checking to see if he got the play off. No, that clock wow. went to zero. Right there, the ball's still on the ground. So that should have been... A delay a game. Instead, it ends up being a pass interference on the other end. And they get the ball snapped. Florida with a first down. On a crossing route, complete. Cronk rights at the 32. Florida keeps their drive going. A little over seven minutes remaining. Man, you got to give credit a lot, or Florida a lot of credit. They're putting a nice drive here. And ironically, the Gators are the worst team in the SEC in penalties, but it's been penalties that have been hurting Arkansas here recently. Del Rio. Down the sideline, incomplete. No contact there. The pass intended for Josh Hammond and Ryan Pulley was right with him. He certainly was, and he was a guy that had dropped a pick six early on in that game against Auburn. They throw at him a lot, but I'll tell you what, he's responded here nicely. Had a pretty good afternoon. Florida not being able to get anything going through the air. Here's one of those other third downs we're talking about again. Under seven to go. Longest drive of the day for Florida helped out by a penalty and it's third down and six. It's two down territory. Callaway's back in there and a wide receiver spot. Over the middle intended for Ahmad Fullwood and it's incomplete and it's fourth down again. Great job that time by the defensive ends Jeremiah Ledbetter and Tevin Beanham. 
beating their tackles to the point, getting Luke Del Rio under a ton of duress. The same very thing that Florida did, or they did to Florida defensively. I got to tell you, this is one of the most important plays of the game if you're the Florida Gators. Well, they got another fourth down. They picked up the last one by penalty. If they don't get this one, when Arkansas gets the ball back the way they can time a possession unit, Florida might not touch it again. Biggest play of the game. Blaycock winding down again. They don't get it off this time, and this time the officials see it. McElwain was trying to call a timeout. McElwain was trying to call a timeout. Now the umpire signaled false start. Nobody has signaled delay a game yet, so let's see what the call is or if they got the timeout. Prior to the false start by the offense, timeout, Florida. Their first charge timeout of the half. Second time that it's come this close. One of them probably should have been called before, but the head coach just in the nick of time with a second to go gets the timeout, something they desperately needed. Time running out on the 11th ranked Gators. They trail 24 to 7 with 646 to play. Well, Jim McElwain wants to get it down to two touchdowns, so he brings out his field goal unit. Eddie Pinheiro, 10 out of 14 on the year's longest, was against Kentucky, 54. This will be a 49-yard field goal to try to cut it to 24 to 10. Six foot 10 offensive lineman Dan Skipper, pretty good at blocking kicks. There he is, right there, number 70. Two this year, seven on his career. Pinheiro kick on the way and he got it. Well, they got three out of it. Eddie Pinheiro from long range has cut the Arkansas lead to 24 to 10 with his 11th field goal of the season. Florida trying to hang in with 641 to play. Yeah, let's go back where we're taking a look at the play clock. You see the play clock there going down. The back judge is looking at the play clock. When the play clock goes to zero, he watches the ball. If there's any movement, he does not blow the whistle and the play dead. That's a mechanic issue with the way that they do it, and sometimes it's really close, but if that ball's moving, they don't blow it dead. The officials all over it on top of that. That was not a delay of game. As Florida goes for an onside kick, but recovered by the Razorbacks. Well, that was a good-looking onside kick by Pinier. He kicked it with the back of his heel to the opposite side. He was running, but Arkansas was all over it. Watch this kick. You can't say this wasn't well designed. Oh, he kicked it with his left foot under his right, but all over it was guess who? Drew Morgan. He went all river dance with that. <laughs> Don't forget later in the game, before we're done here with the next six minutes or so, we'll have a Napa Auto Parts play of the game. I think I got my favorite. I got actually a couple favorites, but I don't get to choose anyway. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> it would always be an offensive lineman. Arkansas is a pitch. Had a big collision after a gain of about a yard. Raleigh Williams, Jordan Sherritt made the hit. But Raleigh Williams for the fourth time, a fifth time this year, sixth time in his career, over 100 yards. And when he goes over 100, Arkansas usually wins. And you know, considering the neck injury and stuff that he had last year, boy, he played well. He's approaching 1,000. Came in with 807, which was fourth in the conference, and so now he's got 908 on the year. And he's probably about a game away from hitting that magic number that so many of Brett Bielema's running backs have had, both at Wisconsin and here at Arkansas. Yeah, and him with the combination of Austin Allen, one of the few quarterback running back combos that averaged 250 and 100 yards rushing in the country. Arkansas. And Arkansas is going to take a They're timeout. First. 556 remaining coach with his arm around his quarterback and a 14 point lead. There's a reason the University of Arkansas is one of the nation's fastest growing universities. We learn in one of the best places to live. Dominating national business plan competition. We're among the top research universities in the U.S. Where teaching and learning lead to discovery. We explore everything. Our traditions set us apart. And bring us together. Even our sidewalks mean something. With the names of all our graduates. We leave our mark here. And everywhere. The, the University, University of, of Arkansas. Arkansas. 
So if you think that your defense that's ranked number one against the pass, number one overall, and number three against the rush in the conference is enough to carry you to victory in the SEC every Saturday, doesn't always work that way. No, it certainly doesn't. There are three phases to football, and so far this afternoon, Arkansas is winning in all of them. And don't forget, we're going to see some pretty good defense tonight at 8 o'clock from Baton Rouge when Alabama takes on the Tigers in Death Valley. Third of our triple header on CBS today, Vern Gary and Ali will have it. But right now we got six minutes left to play here. Raleigh Williams going for all he can, dragged down by David Reese, but a positive gain to the 41 yard line. And the clock ticking away. Florida with two timeouts. They take one. <laughs> now down to one. Please reset the game. We'll take it to 545 to play in Fayetteville. Jared Davis has been banged up all day. He's tried to play through a number of injuries. I'm not sure his left hand's not hurting too, unless he, I don't think that towel's wrapped around for fun. <laughs> well, it's interesting on a third and four situation here that can extend this drive and help them ice this game. Does Arkansas try to run it and take advantage of this defense that's been on the field and been a ton of injuries, or do they put the ball in Austin Allen's hand? Morgan's in the slot to the right. They are going to keep it on the ground. Raleigh Williams cuts it up. And there he goes. Williams is going to ice this thing. Touchdown, Arkansas. Forty-one yards to the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the day. Just some beautiful blocking on a pin and pull scheme. Right there, right there, right there, right there. It's the running lane. Wide open. Some good north-south running by Raleigh Williams. Missed all the last season with a neck injury and could have just very well iced this game against the 11th team in the country. McFain to try to make it 31 to 10, and he does with 540 to go. A stunned number 11 Florida right now. And an elated Arkansas sideline. They've been waiting two weeks to get that nasty Auburn taste out of their mouths after they got shellacked on the road. Came back home, had a bye at a good time. We were here for three days, and the whole time you and John and I and the rest of the crew have been talking and said, you know what? I think Arkansas is ready. Uh, I think they were. There's no question that they answered the call and they did it up front with the offensive line with a lot of guys that were injured moving in and around over 200 yards rushing today almost 250 passing. I can't tell you the more I watch this game the more and more I'm convinced of how important running the football and stopping the run is to winning football and today it's been all about this Arkansas offensive line taking control and just absolutely throttling the Florida defense that to their credit played hard but the injuries have just been too much down the stretch. Connor Lippert will kick off. Well, Michael P. Ryan back deep for Florida. Tyree Cleveland and Thompson have been returning kicks today. Both of them have been injured, so they're down to kickoff return man number three for the Gators. Now a line drive job bounces inside the 10. And did he touch it? He's gonna have to pick it up now. It might have gone out of bounds. Either way, he's inside the 10-yard line. Beautiful kick there. Just a dribbler really put him in a bind about what it is he was supposed to do. I don't know if it can get any better than that. The officials there sitting there discussing it. What exactly happened? They're going to mark it at the seven. So not only did Florida need three touchdowns to tie this thing up, they didn't need to start inside their own 10 yard line. Again, the line drive kick, little indecision by P. Ryan, not used to being the kick returner because he's in there for a couple guys that normally are back there to return kicks and then his left foot stepped out at the seven yard line so that's where they've got to go to work on offense and not a lot of time left and only one time out remaining empty set the real throw from his own end zone no he won't sacked at the one guess who 
Dietrich wise again. That is 11 sacks in the last 14 games, and he has been playing with a bad shoulder and a bad hand, and he's had one of his best games of the year. No question. Jeremiah led better inside on that as well. This defensive line, remember, it was Jeff Collins, the defensive coordinator, who was talking about his unit needed to go, but it's been Rob Smith of Arkansas, whose front four has had an outstanding ball game. And now Luke's going to have to throw from deep in his own end zone. Got rid of it in a hurry. Nice catch by Siate Lewis, a one-hander, and he got it out across the 15-yard line, and he's got a first down, I think. But Andre Tolliver maybe had an opportunity to jar that ball loose on Lewis, and he pulled up because he didn't think Lewis was going to make the catch. Lewis, who had a big touchdown catch in Jacksonville, and the win over Georgia, one hands that one and gives him a fresh set of downs at the 18-yard line. I thought he had a hell of a game last week. Yep. Crossing route. This is forward. And Arkansas have given up some yards right now, but time is of the essence with four and a half to go. And some of these total yards, it's going to look a little better for Florida when this game is over. Their last drive that netted on the field goal, and right now working from their own seven out to the 40. But they're kind of hollow yards right now. Yeah, very much so. And Arkansas, if you're a defensive back, you want to keep everything inside and in front of you. Don't get beat over your head. Well, Rio's got to go short across the middle, but Powell can make a lot of guys miss, and he made two miss already. And inside the 40, another first down at the 39. Brandon Powell, who's not only a running back at times, but uh, does some of the stuff Percy Harvin used to do, and just like this on the crossing route, got free, and then the yards after catch gets him a first down. He missed Antonio Callaway, who got behind the coverage. That could have been a touchdown if he had made a different read. Under four to play. Yeah, Rio flushed to his right. He's got a man wide open. He threw behind him. And that was Cronkright, the tailback. He had pretty good position to make a play there. Ramsey was trying to stay with him, but here a throw by Del Rio. Ramsey's been a defensive end for most of the year, but because of the changes they made over the bye week, they moved him to the strong side linebacker position or the Sam position. This defense for Arkansas playing quite a bit more base, which means their normal personnel, four down linemen, three linebackers are a 4-3 than they have. Because of that, Ramsey's been on the field quite a bit more. Empty backfield, Del Rio on second down of 10. Deep middle. Oh, what a catch. Nice throw and catch. Josh Hammond, the freshman. And he's got another first down. Clock stops momentarily. They'll try to get down there and get a playoff in a hurry back in the red zone at the 14 yard line. I love what I'm seeing out of Florida. They're being aggressive, and Del Rio doing a pretty nice job. It's only taking him two minutes and 15 seconds to get there so far. He pumps once. And now he's going to throw it away. He tried to sort of motion his receivers to go with him to the corner and had to get rid of it. Stephen Colbert has the election surrounded. Live editions of the Late Show the night before and after Election Day. Don't miss them. Monday and Wednesday, live on CBS. That dude is crazy, man. <laughs> Especially with election type stuff. Oh, my Perfect. goodness. It's a field day. Stealing. So at the 14 yard line, second down and 10, clock stop 318. Florida's got one timeout remaining. They got a score in a hurry. Onside kick it and try to do it again. They got a lot of work to do, but they've done nicely on this drive. Del Rio got rid of it in a hurry up just off the fingertips of Mark Thompson. Nicely timed pass. He just had a little bit too much on it. That time there was pressure by Dwayne Eugene, excuse me, who was in coverage. But man, just a terrible missed opportunity by Mark Thompson, who returns to the night's game from suspension. But man, so close yet so far for McElwain and the Gators. Because we're in the red zone here, the field shrinks. You don't have to play as conservative. I think the Razorbacks need to continue to pressure just like they did on that last down. Antonio Callaway is up to the top of your screen. One of three wideouts that way on third down at 10. Del Rio is in trouble. He's going down again. This time, Dijon Jackson got to him. And the clock will continue to go, working its way inside three minutes. 
In a situation where you're trying to score and preserve time, a sack is about the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. It does give them a little bit more field to work with. They've had some success doing that. In a kind of a crazy way, you wonder if this is going to open things up here a little bit more for the Gators, but Bijan Jackson with a second and a half sack of the season. Well, they lost about 35 seconds, though, and they're still taking their time. Down to two and a half to go. Fourth and 17 might be the last time they touch it on offense. Del Rio throws to the end zone, and it's knocked down. Callaway looking for a pass interference. He doesn't get it. That's Jared Collins in coverage. Great coverage. Turns and looks for the football. Oh, wow. He got away with one. He grabbed him by the waist. That should have been a pass interference. Obviously, the opposing coach says no. Antonio Callaway was probably correct. And so it turns it over to Arkansas offense with 2.20 to go, and Florida can only stop it once with a timeout. The play before that, Mark Thompson had the football at his fingertips that would have given the Gators a touchdown. Now it's time for the four minute offense and the Trench Hogs up front to end this game. This is the best and most fun part of a football game for <laughs> offensive linemen. Right in the middle of the heap there. And positive yardage again by Whaley. He does not let that pile drive him back very often. He uses that 216 pounds to his advantage. He certainly does. A lot of losses from this offensive line a year ago who was a finalist for the Joe Moore Award. Which is a new award, but unique in that it recognizes the most outstanding offensive line unit in the country. These guys were a finalist. They changed their offensive line coach, Kurt Anderson, comes in. They've had so many changes. Even today, there's been personnel changes. But 200 yards and counting on the ground this afternoon against better, one of the better rush defenses in the country. And now, breaking out of the pack is Wheeler again. He stays in bounds, flags down. As Marcus May throws into the turf. Holding number 72 on the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Frank Ragnow picks up the holding call. A reminder, stay tuned for the Jeep postgame show coming up right after our game. And then at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 o'clock Central Time, the battle in the bayou at Death Valley. Alabama and LSU will cap off our triple header on CBS. If you're Frank Ragnow, I don't know if you can block that last play any better. He had his hands inside. He certainly saw the defender trying to flail. But it's pretty academic here at this point. Clock winding down at 125. Got to think about the rest of the season for Arkansas. I'll talk about that after this snap. How about the rest of the season for Kentucky? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're looking their chops right now, getting ready for the Georgia Bulldogs in Lexington. But Arkansas Whaley really backpedals near the first down at the 30-yard line. They've got LSU coming in here next week. Then they're at Mississippi State and at Missouri the day after Thanksgiving. The way they played in November and the way they played today, they look like a team that can run the table, maybe. There's no question. They picked themselves up off the mat. They got whooped in every phase. They folded. They were shell-shocked against Auburn. And Coach Bielema challenged them. He said, who are we? That wasn't us out there. Who are we going to be? They responded. They took accountability. They've stepped up. And they played a hell of a ball game here today against a very good defense. They got a whooping two weeks ago, and they gave one this afternoon. And that is going to do it. The Hogs win their sixth. And they've beaten some good teams. Their three losses had come to teams that were in the college football ranking top 10. And they just picked off number 11 this afternoon, 31 to 10. Big win for the Razorbacks at home.
Florida loses their second now, and they're in danger of losing their spot in the SEC East. That's time for the play of the game, presented by Napa Auto Parts. And it was early, and it was Santos Ramirez off the ricochet that set the tone for the Razorbacks. A pick six put them up seven to nothing. They really never looked back. They never trailed after that. And Austin Allen, a nice job in leading the offense. Don't forget Vern Gary and Alley with Alabama and LSU coming up later. For Aaron Taylor and John Trivett, Brad Nessler saying so long from Fayetteville. Final score, the Hogs from beginning to end dominate 11th ranked Florida. And they win it 31 to 10 going away at Razorback Stadium. That's it from Fayetteville. Have a good weekend, everybody. The Jeep Post Game Show is coming up next right after these messages.